The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Broadcasting live from the Toscano Cigar Soundstage in Salem, New Hampshire, USA. And broadcasting around the world, this is the Cigar Authority. Transmitting since 2010, the Cigar Authority is the longest-lasting cigar podcast ever. Grab a cigar and light them up, light them up, light them up. This is the Cigar Authority. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Thursday, November 18th, 2021. Welcome, everybody, to a special edition of the Cigar Authority. Today, it's Joke and Smoke. Smoking cigars paired with comedy, and we have four great comedians coming up, plus two great cigars, and uh, it's not just any cigars. These are special cigars made just for the event, and that's not all. We'll be dining on dishes from the Cigar Authority cookbook, if you don't have that yeah, baby. yet, and uh, all prepared by our chef, the vice president of sales for La Flor Dominicana, Mr. Jonathan Carney. Welcome, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. This is big for me, Mr. Jonathan Carney. What do I love? I love food and laughing. <laughs> food and laughing. What's better than that? So before the show started, yeah. I, you didn't have a napkin up here. No, it's and then, showtime. <laughs> and then it comes showtime, and Jonathan leans back, and I'm looking at a different person. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, no, this is, this is awesome. I, I, there's a level of excitement when we've done these on Thursdays. Yes. Uh, just about a year ago, we started the Gourmet Smoke Sessions, and this is technically one of them. Yes. This is technically yeah. number 14. Um, so we've got two here, and so we started this off about a year ago. So this is really fun. There's a lot of electricity around here. Huge crowd. There's Absolutely. Tons of food. food. Tons of over food over the top. Uh, and and what I like about it is I, I give John Connie a call. I got this crazy idea. I get into the idea. I'm three quarters of the way, and he goes, "I'm in. You're in. You're in on these things. These foolish things that I I come up with is you're interested. So I love you for it." And, uh, well, because anytime you're throwing an event, there's going to be food involved. Yes. He loves to cook. He yes. cooks very well, exceedingly well. And I got to give props. You've got your, uh, I can't even say sous chef. You gotta- You've got your assistant chef in there, Dylan, absolutely killing it. I- I'm an amateur chef by trade. I grew up in the restaurant business. Um, started cooking when I was 10. Dylan's literally a professional chef. Okay. A shoe chef or a regular chef? An actual chef. I mean, he's trained. He's been an executive chef at restaurants before. Uh, he owns his own bread company. They're the bread sponsor for the seasoning, Crust Grave Bread in Newbury Port Mass. And, and let me tell you, dessert bread we have. Yeah, we've got oh dessert my bread. God. There's not only yeah. bread, we have yeah. dessert bread. I'm, I'm fresh baked. out of my mind here. Yeah, today. fresh baked today. He baked it before he came, but no, he's been over the top to have and uh, I mean he's finishing everything off right now and I mean he was we were having discussions about sanitation and you know we were making it was it was great it was like we, we turned this into a professional kitchen tonight and uh, it's great to have a true professional working assignment not that you're not a professional yeah, I appreciate that well very excited getting a lot of compliments on the meatballs by the way so <laughs> this dessert bread is new to me I always thought dessert bread was just the bread that's left over after oh, the meal oh no this is chocolate bread oh. interesting there, there goes the diet there we go <laughs> Yeah, forget the diet today. Uh, all bets are off. But um, another reason why I thought you weren't going to make it is you've been very busy since the last time we had you on the show. You not only got married, you had a baby, and you moved. So the funniest thing for me over the last few months, I'd say since probably July, every month there's been a, a lifetime rite of passage that's happened. Engagement, marriage, baby announcement. Wow. All these different things. Um, so everyone I run into people, they're like, oh, it's so great to see you. And they're like, congratulations for literally everything. Uh, so, yeah, it's been really special. I'm actually finishing up uh, an Autumn Carney right now. Which Autumn Josephine Autumn is Carney. Name. I actually brought a couple that I was going to smoke with everyone, but I, I crushed them literally uh, in half. So, hmm. why, why I mean I finished it, I, I crushed it in half, so we're not going to get to have any. Okay. But, yeah, I got a little baby girl. She's just over a month. My wife and her... Uh, her entire Latin family are taking great care of her every time I leave. And they pamper the snot out of me. I mean, it's, it's insane. I, I highly recommend single men, if you're in Florida or anywhere, find a Latin woman with a large family. You'll never have to, you'll never need for anything. You don't have to do a diaper. It's incre- I've changed three diapers. Okay. Mm. I mean, just it's insane. Fun. They just won't even just let me do fun. it. <laughs> yeah, they won't even let me do it. Uh, Dave, question from the yes. uh, chat room here. 
Uh, what does the anorexic guy use to shine his head? <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, you've heard it every every single week now. You gotta, you gotta. <laughs> I can't. Wear, I'm not wearing a hat with no, a suit No, you gotta coat. put some powder on. It. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what Shockweight Shockweight guy's wife said that uh, he needs to put some baby powder on his head. Yeah, that's. I, I love. I grew my beard out over the last year, so I don't look fat. He's grown him out, so he doesn't uh, get an intervention for losing so much weight. Yes. <laughs> 183 pounds I weighed in yeah. today. You're not a small guy. You need to be 210. Yeah. You got, you got, you got an issue. Yeah, you do. I, yeah. I have to say, this is the first time I'm excited to have been omitted from something. It looks like everyone has a tray of food in you front of them. You said you wouldn't eat any Except of it. for me, I won't. Yeah, so you won't eat any yeah. of it. He's not going to eat I ate my no. salad before uh, the event starts. Yeah, he's so, underweight and he won't eat. He's got a... There's something going on here. An anorexic thing or something's yeah. happening. There's something. I told him, so I'm All off right. the hook. He's heard it from me. I'm not going to say it again. So we have special cigars, special food, special comedians. We've got everything special tonight. Tell me about this special cigar. I guess not Barry. It's going to have to be Jonathan Carney because you're the only one that knows about this. So we've got... We've got the Joke and Smoke. This is Gourmet Smoke Session number 14 cigar. This is, this is our double press. So it's a real popular uh, blend we've had. The double press was Habano wrapper, Dominican binder and filler. It was a test blend originally for the Airbender line. Okay. And it's become one of our more popular uh, SKUs, specifically in the Northeast. But um, it's a 6x54 box press Toro. This one's a little special, though. I'll say. So, oh, so let me pass these out to these guys. Yeah, about time. Here's a little pack. It's, this is how it comes in a little five pack. Like this is pretty cool. Of how so that is. This cigar. I'll put it right here in the championship belt. This cigar is barber pole oh. with Connecticut shade wrapper, uh, Connecticut shade accents, and it's a candela. It's green. Yes. So we've got a green box press cigar. It Toro. makes it funny because yep. it's joking. Smoke. And we've got. Funny. We've got the little comedy faces on there, yeah. too, for the dueling comedians that are working with us tonight here with the championship belt. So this is the Joke and Smoke exclusive. It's the double press, so a medium full-body blend with Candela wrapper and Connecticut shade accent. So it's pretty fun. I, I, uh, these came in yesterday. You can't take it out. I already took one of them out of the package. I couldn't get it out. He's underweight. He it's because he's anorexic. Yeah. He can't said just you, pull it. You said you weren't going to say that anymore. Oh, yeah. You he said it. I didn't say it. We and need Solomon one more. Needs one. But these one. are super special, and it's fun. It just says, he just literally just arrived yesterday, um, so in the nick of time. That would have been the biggest joke, right, if, uh, if they hadn't shown up? Everybody would have laughed oh, yeah, real hard, right? Oh, yeah, that's funny. I, yeah. I wouldn't have. The, the <laughs> joke, joke would have been on me for sure. But, yeah, super special just for tonight. Very limited amount. I, none of us have smoked this yet, so Candela, I guess we light it up, right? Can, yep. Candela and Shade on a box press. La Flor Dominicana. Never been done before. I don't think I've ever smoked a, a uh, Candela Double Claro Lafleur. box press, period. Period. I've smoked Candela LFDs. We have a Double Claro line, yeah. but I've never, I don't think I've ever seen anyone do a box pressed Candela. Candela. Never heard know. of it. One of one, I think. Yep. And we're, we're going to tell you how you can get them also in a little while. You ever have wasabi peanuts? I did. That's with the cold drawers. All right. Mm. I was going to say coffee. That was a good call. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, coffee I get, but the only thing is I'm working with coffee in the back because one of the items, so uh, everything is like coffee. That was, that was solid. Wasabi. Yeah. I wonder if that's because you can see it. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> this kind of looks... It just looks awesome. So uh, the food for tonight, we started off, we have it right here. We have some hors d'oeuvres. The hors d'oeuvres are out and people are eating the hors d'oeuvres now. We have Chuck Morrison's chicken fingers with sauces. It's on page 22 of the cookbook, if you have one at home. If you don't, we'll tell you how you can get one of those, too. We have Tony V. Tony V is a comedian. He's here with us tonight. He'll be hosting the, the comedians that are on there. He could actually win himself. Right. Can he win? Um, he has the sandwich that left the building He's on, on page the 48. The sandwich that left the building is homage to Elvis, Elvis Presley, right? We have Roy Kirby. Roy Kirby is the representative for Perdomo Cigars. He has the award-winning grilled cheese. I have to admit, I did taste that before the show started. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It's, it's walnuts, good. green, green. It's, it's got candied walnuts, green apples. Uh, so you candied the walnuts with yeah. brown sugar. Then we put brie on it, and then a bunch of butter. 
and then we put the butter, we candy the walnuts with the butter and the brown sugar. Crazy good. And then good. you soak the bread in oh. butterscotch. Butterscotch. What? It's insane. <laughs> it's insane. It's so good. And it is award winning. He won an award for that. We have Mr. Jonathan's fourth place meatball. Which, I would like to add, uh, there are no other contestants in the competition this and, evening. And yet you with still came in fourth. <laughs> so if, I come if, in first if place if by default. If your meatball can t tell a joke, yes, you'd win, but I can't tell Did well, you eat one? I haven't yet. It's See, right here. I'm going to eat them all. Actually, no, that's funny. Actually, oh, oh, whoa, what is that? I don't know. Actually, I, Train's coming. I just <laughs> tried all four of the appetizers. The meatball came in fourth. Fourth? Okay. It's a fourth place <laughs> meatball. It should. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat it first so I can get rid of the taste with the other food. Okay. And we have Janine Perdomo's Cuban Sangria Perdomo style, page 58. Pour some of that, Mr. Jonathan. None for you because you probably don't drink wine or fruit or whatever's wrong with you. <laughs> I just want, if, if, if Janine or Nick happen to be watching, which would not be a shock, I just want to let them know. Two of the items were Perdomo associated this evening. So, ah. so I produced two Perdomo items. Mm. That's right. That's true. Because Roy Kirby's, right? Two of them. Yep. And what does dinner look like? We have Mickey Pegg's Saintly Caesar. I saw you working on that back there. Page 118. We have Mr. Jonathan Connie's what? It, uh, it's Mr. Jonathan Connie's Spicy Pomodoro Penne. Mm. Page 70. So, of course, you've chosen the menu here today. Uh, we have Jim Price's. Coffee rubbed filet mignon on page 96. And we have, uh, it says bread and butter, but it's over the top. It's not just bread and butter. It's crazy bread and butter. Uh, we have white wine. We have red wine. And then we're going to go to dessert later on. And dessert is Gianna Garofalo's peanut butter cookies. I witnessed them last night as they were made. And yes, I sampled that again just to make sure they were fine. They're out of sight. Page 52. And Angela Garofalo's lemon cello, I'm sorry, my fault, didn't make the cut. Uh-oh. Didn't make it. My fault. So I'm going to make my one fault. comment before you. I know we got, we got some stuff we're working on here, but I'm going to say one thing. We did discuss this menu, and there's a few items that we obviously we have to do Tony V sandwich, right? Yes. I mean, Tony V's here. And then I really kind of wanted to do Roy because I like Roy. Yeah. And then I wanted to do Jimmy's because I like Jimmy, and I also like beef. And so I'm going to tell you something. The sandwiches were the biggest mess. I, it took me three hours to make all these sandwiches. And I'd never even really thought about it until I got to the grocery store and I'm shopping. And I'm like, I'm getting all these individual pieces for this. you got to remember, when you're cooking for a large group, beef, dishes, pastas, casseroles, you make the whole thing and then you cook it. With these sandwiches, you make one sandwich at a time. Yeah. Even if you have the bread laid out one at a time. Brutal. It's time consuming. Brutal. Yeah. But they are delicious. Times 50 sandwiches. Yeah. It gets up there. So in the, I just took a bite of the peanut butter one, which is, it crunched. What do I have in here? What's going on? Oh, so the peanut butter, you got the Tony V's. We got honey. We got bacon. We got bananas. And we got peanut butter. And we got a bunch of butter on it, too. Oh, outstanding. Yeah. Dave, I'm going to put up a, a picture of the event cigar there. There we go. So is that beautiful or what? Hmm. It is unbelievable. So quickly, let's get to how you can get it. We have made three packs that uh, gives you the opportunity to get that Joke and Smoke Cigar. So the first pack, we call it the Bit Pack. And it's the Bit Pack because... Comedians, comedians write bits. Run them in a bit. So we have the Fleur Dominicana Double Hero 6x60 Natural and the 6x60 Maduro. You get both of them. You get the LFD 300 Oscuro. 400 Oscuro and 500 Oscuro. So all those five, along with the Joke and Smoke exclusive cigar. So Barry, what do we have for that? That's $59.99. dollars It's called the Bit Pack. And how will they find that? The easiest way to find it is go to twoguyscigars.com. Right on the front page, you're going to see this bright, almost obnoxious orange graphic. Click it. It will take you to the page where you can find the items. And if you so choose, they're there for you to purchase. Okay, I recommend you do for, for this cigar alone, let, let, on, let alone. The Fluid of the kind of cigars are hard to get to begin with anyway. So they are. here you go. The second pack, are we ready for that? The second pack is called the Gag Pack. Again, you can see where we're going here. Yeah, very uh, funny. The gag pack <laughs> is, uh, what, Barry, what is the gag pack here? Well, you're going to get the Lafleur Dominicana La Vocada, as well as the Capitulo Dos. The Double Lajero Chisel Maduro, 
the Oro Tubo number six. Strongest cigar. The 654 Maduro, the 452 Maduro, the L400, one joke and jo- smoke exclusive cigar, and one LFD event only cigar that has a nipple. Yes, has a nipple. Mm-hmm. I'm so, interested. So, what's the deal with the event only cigar? This is when you go to events. This, yeah, his mouth's full. It's all right. It's made exclusively for events. Uh, the concept originally about seven years ago was to change it out every year. Yeah. Um, and then everyone kept asking for that specific one after the first year we did it, so we never changed it. Okay. Um, and it's and it's a, become like a little cult following. All right. Here's the cult following. So and those gonna, nine cigars are ninety nine ninety nine. All right. Perfect. So you're going to get. Uh, seven regular cigars, but great cigars, nevertheless, with chisels, La Bocada, um, hard to it's get an stuff LFD in there. LFD smorgasbord yeah. right there. Along with the Joke and Smoke and the event-only cigar, nine cigars, ninety nine ninety nine. I don't think anyone's going to take that pack, though. Right, because they're going to take They're going to go with the LOL pack. Mm-hmm. All right, what do we have? The LOL pack, you get all of the cigars in both packs. That's 15 total cigars, plus five more Special cigars. We're going to add one extra LFD event only cigar. That means you get two instead of one. We're going to add three extra joke and smoke cigars. That's five instead of two. You're going to get the full five pack unopened. We're going to add an LFD tomahawk cigar from last year's gourmet smoke session. And that's not all. We're going to throw in an autographed cookbook and give the money to charity. So we're going to throw it in to you for free and we're going to pay the charity the money. That's 20 cigars. That's a cookbook for $199.99, and there's eight rare cigars in there, plus free shipping and a free cookbook. How do you not do that? that that's, that's the LOL pack. Yeah, that's the one to go with. LOL. What does that mean, Ed? Uh, laugh out loud. That's Very it. funny. Very funny. Was that a laugh track to Larry? It was. <laughs> it, was. <laughs> it was. It was laugh track. I didn't know loud. he was going to make an appearance tonight. He I'm did. all about the comedy. I feel like my ears are being molested by every time he speaks. Yeah, yeah I feel voice. a little dirty, don't you? Yeah, it's so, uncomfortable. Yeah, it's a little creepy, mm. but um, so that, the meal, you got a guy out there helping you along with the meal, but I think we got to get you off the stage yep. so you can wrap it up. But I'd like to talk to you when you're, as you're preparing, so can you? Yeah, let's go take a look where he's at. He should be wrapping up some of the beef now, but we'll go take a look in the back. We'll see what's going on. All right, and, uh, yeah. us up with your phone, those that are watching Absolutely. on YouTube yep. and Facebook. Can, can jump on, and uh, while you're doing that, we'll bring Tony V up here and talk to him and see what's going on with the comedians and, and what he sees out there. So thanks, John Carney. Get out there, and don't forget to feed us. Bye, John. It's going to be your email. Yep. Yep. Okay, we got it. So we're bringing on Tony V, legendary comedian. Uh, he's been on lots of movies and things. He's actually been on the Cigar Authority before, if you remember that. And if you listen really closely on the Ash Holes podcast, he's actually the voice you hear. In the with, intro, in the yeah. the intro of the show. Tony V. Really? I do the intro. You do you the do. intro of the show. Wow. It it's, must be a good intro. So it's fantastic. So, it's so you, haven't, you haven't got the cigar yet because we're going to pass them out right before we the bring, show. We bring yeah. you on. What is, what is this? This is a cigar made just for tonight. Yeah. Look what's on it. It's, it's got the, the... Oh, my God. It's got the uh, Dueling, Dueling Comedians, Comedians yeah. logo. So it's a box-pressed Candela yeah. in green. From La Flor Dominicana. Yeah, made well, just for tonight. Just for tonight. Just for tonight. You're unbelievable. That's it. La Flor I, Dominicana I is unbelievable. I had, I had nothing to do with it, but uh, thank you. Well, you came up with it. Yes. You had to come up with the idea. I said, let's make it something crazy. Wait, is that thing branded right into the side of the in, cigar? In the cigar using, using the uh, tobacco itself. They laser cut the tobacco they and then cut. lay it Unbelievable. Lay it right Unbelievable. Is that something? That's a Amazing. All I'm right. I swore. I so, didn't want to. So this is mm-hmm. a regular comedy I didn't want to swear. Okay. No, you can. No, I know I can't, but I don't want to. So you've right. been doing comedy for, what, 10, 12 years? What? Yeah, a couple, couple <laughs> of months. A couple of months now. A <laughs> couple of months. And He has bits older than I am. Yeah. Yes, he does. I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you'll hear him tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll hear him tonight <laughs> because everybody okayed for us to broadcast the comedian. Yeah. Okay, which is great. And oh, I, I don't know. Did they, I'll ask them. All right. I'm Please. sure they'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> but it's not getting recorded. It's just going out. It's going out. Yeah, okay. Fine. Yeah. So Don't tell them. No. Nah, <laughs> 
they, they're not a bright bunch. They're funny. <laughs> they're funny, just not a bright bunch. That's but it. They are, and you did it last time, and you did it the time before, that you bring in these top people, and I figure the cigar smoking alone is enough to turn them away. Well, but, but thank you, because they're doing you a favor. They do, yeah. And, and I, I'm very explicit about it. I go, you know, the jokes are secondary. <laughs> you know, the, the show is secondary. We're getting together because we can smoke inside like decent Civilized human beings. Human beings. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of sitting outside by the dumpster. The, right. Like like the animals that they think we are. Right. We're now, inside and Tony, it's comfortable and I don't it's want all you good. to think that you can't go smoke by the dumpster because yeah. you're welcome to the dumpster anytime you want. Thank you. Because you feel right yeah. at home. But if you go to a top comedy in, especially in the Boston area, Tony V's on it, and you're looking for him. He hasn't been on it, or he just got off. Either way, mm. yeah. Go by the dumpster. Any dumpster, anything. I'm thinking about getting a trailer with my own dumpster on it. <laughs> you know, like a, a airstream that yeah. looks like a dumpster. So I'll always have a dumpster near me. There we go. Yeah, I Beautiful. think I think that's the way I gotta go. So. Three comedians you brought with you. Yeah, One, I got, let, let's talk about. Yeah, the I got. Uh, it, you know, it, it. The comedy community that I deal with are, are amazing to begin with, and then you know we explain what's going on, and they all go, yeah, you, you know. And I, we got the the queen of Boston comedy, uh, Christine Hurley. Unbelievable. She's un. I mean, she's just. You know, she's as uh, good as it gets around here for, for high women energy. comics. She's high energy. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if this room can actually contain her. You know, we'll we might have to take out a, ro- uh, yeah. a wall or two. But, you know, she, she starts at uh, 11 and goes up from there. Right. Right. <laughs> and then uh, one of my, old bu- my oldest buddies in the world, uh, Brad Mastrangelo, who has done the podcast, uh, you know, my mm-hmm. podcast a bunch of times, yep. th- uh, does a, a amazing work. And he didn't hesitate. I think he answered me before I hit the send <laughs> Two on Boston the, Guys yeah. Whack a Pie is a, is a podcast. The, yeah. Uh, Jimmy Dunn, my buddy Jimmy yes. Dunn and I, we have Two Boston Guys Whack Up a Pie. Yeah. Uh, uh, and Jimmy's still recovering from the anniversary party. Right. That yeah. was too yeah. much to go for. Yes, yeah. it was. <laughs> yeah. He, you know, I was, I was just talking to our friend uh, Bobcat Goldthwait on the way up here, and he'd love to do the Cigar, oh, cigar Authority. Next time he's in town, we were talking oh, about it. Oh, huge. But he's we, welcome. Be big. We were talking about when we used to do shows, and, and this doesn't go back that far, especially in Providence, Rhode Island, where they, they were the, one of the last clubs to get rid of the no smoking. Ah. But we would come home reeking of cigarettes. Uh, I wish it was cigars because that doesn't bother yeah. me. But cigarette smoke, would, it, it, it was just like a cloud. And, and, you know, we worked in those conditions for years. Right. You know. Yeah. Well, we're, so. we're getting to the cloud. I mean, when we get yeah. all those people in yeah, here. Yeah, but you've got a good filtration system. Yeah, we're too. working it. It's yeah. working. Yeah. Uh, and last, Orlando Baxter. Uh, Orlando Baxter, who's, you know, I, I say he's a newer comedian. He's newer to us, but he's been uh, working for, for years. He's one of the funniest guys uh, around today. You know, he's, he's in demand all over the world, really. He does USO tours and ships, and, you yeah. know, he's always traveling stuff, and he happened to be home. You know, we and caught him at a good time. the highlight of his career here <laughs> on the Cigar Authority. Well, he's the one who I, I said several times, there's going to be cigar smoke, just so you know. Yeah. We're smoking cigars. And he goes, yeah, yeah, no problem. And then I go... I'm not kidding. Yeah, it's right. not like one person <laughs> standing by a window puffing cigar smoke out of wind. It, we, there's going to be 60 people, most no. of them smoking cigars. Yeah, now, absolutely. Tony, are they all aware that they might win the belt? You know, I don't know if I emphasize the... Uh, well, you had your the, work cut out for you emphasizing the cigar smoking. Right. Yeah. Getting it through the thick to skulls. Get, right. To get it down to the belt was a whole nother thing, but... You know, co- comedians, look, we're judged every time we step on stage anyway. So, you know, True. if they're getting something out of it, that's a bonus. Usually we're just shown the door. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Even Joey and Eddie, our champion from last year, is showing up just to see what's in competition for him. Yeah. As we gather right. winners. Now, Champions. that's not his belt, right? No. It's a whole new belt. He, he has his own. He brought he, his belt. He, oh, nice. He brought his belt, so see. we'll see that there are... Three Tony, different belts. Three Tony, different if belts. I zoom in, you'll see it says 2021 champion. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. We yeah. had Drew Dunn in 2019. He, yeah. 
Because he, he the, won the, the ruling the comedian's, comedians competition. The, right. 2020 Joey and Eddie, and we're going to see uh, well, who can pull it off tonight. Which could be you, still. You I never you, win. You never win, but that's I okay. never win. As Mr. Jonathan doesn't, because no. the name of the meatball, I don't know if you tried it up there, is called the fourth place meatball. Uh. Because... He came in last last time. Nope. It was a tie. A came tie. in fourth place. <laughs> yes. Fourth place. I was announced fourth, fourth out of five. Yes. Fourth place meatball recipe. Uh, uh, or tied for you, last. Did you partake in any of the food, including uh, your sandwich? My sandwich uh, was very tasty. Very I nice. mean, anytime you can, you can pay tribute to Elvis Presley in a sandwich. Oh, boy. You know, the only way that could be get better is... Actually, I could get pieces of Elvis in there. <laughs> you know, like if we used him instead of bacon, it yeah. would have been, it, which little, we could have. A little bit probably of, be the uh, same yeah. fact. About, yeah, I mean, it's pork belly, it's pork belly, I guess. A little bit of you the know. crispy king. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. There we go. So we're looking for. You, you know, uh, I used to maintain right after his death that he didn't really die, that he was alive and living in my colon. Uh, because periodically my body would make a noise that could only be attributed to the king. The king. <laughs> the king. The king. Yeah. Did you partake in some of the food? Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. And we just did appetizers so far. I mean, this, mm. this yeah. is going to go over the top. Can you can you divulge what the uh, what the entree is? What, yes. What the meal is? We have a uh, filet mignon, coffee rubbed filet mignon. Oh, nice. And a uh, spicy parmadoma. Pomodoro, penne, Caesar salad. We have bread, but we just don't have regular bread. We have the maker of the, this bread company is here. He made all these different breads, including a dessert bread. A, a dessert bread, you A bread, say. we're having it for dessert. How is that not cake? <laughs> <laughs> Correct, because it's chocolate bread. Right. That's a good point. Right. It's, I, I mean, good at point. some point, you've got to stop splitting hairs <laughs> and stop calling it bread. I think Call the big it what dis it is. discrepancy on this, or the, the big giveaway, is if it has a crust, then it's bread. No crust, then it's, it's cake. It's cake. I see. Ah. It's, so it's the way it's cooked? You know, because there was a controversy, and we tackled this on two Boston guys, Whack Up a Pie. All right. That uh, the Subway people, they're not a sponsor, are they? No. No. No, okay. The <laughs> Subway people in Ireland, their bread is deemed cake. Because of the sugar because content. Because of the, con ah. the sugar content. that it, Legality. Yeah, yeah, legality. They couldn't call it. Let me ask you this question. Bread. A chicken cutlet. Yeah. <laughs> is that fried chicken? Sure it is. So if you've got chicken parmesan. Oh, by the way, uh, Chef Dylan agrees with me, by the way. He listens really? to the show and he says, it's fried chicken, period, because you, you fried it. You go to a restaurant, you say, give me fried chicken. They bring you chicken parmesan. You say, hey, take this back. I ordered the fried chicken, right? Right. Because the fried chicken has bones in it. Well. Depends on what chicken well, you're frying. Well, now you're talking southern fried chicken. No, fried chicken. <laughs> Kentucky fried chicken, not southern Kentucky. Is that Kentucky, southern? That, that is southern. southern. That's southern. That's, yeah. it's, where's Kentucky? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> where, anybody know where Kentucky is? It's in the Bible Belt. I'm, belts I'm guessing in the South. That's what I, if I had a guess, Certainly I'd say the South. Sure. Louisiana fried chicken, yeah. Popeyes. Well, they have Louisiana hot chicken, which is a well, spicy. That's big in Nashville. Nashville, Nashville hot, hot chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. It fried chicken. It's fried chicken. Yeah. yeah. All right. But well, you can get a fried, you know, cutlet. Yeah, you know. You know what the, it's a the cutlet, cutlet. You know what the cutlet's made heritage. out of? Chicken. It's made out of chicken. Yeah, for the most part. Chef Dylan says that even if you're making chicken parmesan, that fried chicken is one of the ingredients of the chicken parmesan. So yes, you're it's adding, an ingredient. You're but adding fried chicken to tomato sauce and cheese. You wouldn't be and happy you're making it. I'm not saying that's how you would order it you at a restaurant. Say your, your sandwich is peanut butter. It has peanut butter in it. Can I have some peanut butter and I give you that sandwich with bacon in it? Yeah. Bananas. You didn't get peanut butter. Give me a jar of peanut butter and I hand you your sandwich. Right. It it's a peanut butter sandwich. The basis of it is a peanut butter sandwich. Yeah. You basis. know, we're talking cultures here. Yeah. It, it's it's a cultural this is, difference. This is important. There's no Italian. <laughs> you you should know this more than anybody. No Italian in their right mind is going to call a, a chicken cutlet fried chicken. Correct. They're going to call it Nana's chicken cutlet. Right. Which is what I grew up on. Yes. Right. You know, so and that's the point. So technically, it's a fried. It is a fried chicken, but it's not fried chicken. It's chicken that was fried, right? But it's not fried, chicken. right? But yeah. it's not fried chicken. No. Yeah. Hey, uh, we have uh, Chef John Carney uh, in the camera. Can we can we get him? Is he available to 
to you talk know? to and see. I see jumping up and down. Something's going on. Is, Do we want to? Is he still this? pounding the chicken? I, kind of looks like he's giving CPR to somebody. What's happening? Over I don't there? know what's going on back there. I don't know. Why? Oh. Why is he pounding the chicken? I don't know. He's, he's here. He. I think I heard him. I can hear you guys. All right. Ah, I hear. Perfect. I don't see. Yeah, where you there are. He there you are. So, uh, so Chef Dylan and I. We got Dylan here from Crush Craig Bread, Newberry Port, Mass. He's uh, he's. I just tried his tomato basil three cheese bread. It's Ooh. ridiculous. Oh, you guys are gonna love it. You guys are gonna love <laughs> I it. I am gonna love it. Oh my God. Like, uh, Don't I'm, point that thing at I'm, me. I'm Jesus. interested in the dessert bread too. Right. We've been talking about the Yeah, and then he's got then he's got chocolate dessert bread that we that he's working on. I mean it's it's out of control. So we just pulled out here, he's working on the bread. We just finished the Peme Pomodoro. Ooh. We've got some more filet mignon. This is Jim Price's uh, coffee rub filet mignon. All the food's now out, so everybody's eating. We just got backups going on here. Um, this is where we did all the sandwiches. I could not have done any of this without Dylan. I, 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 I said to him, it would have gotten done. Absolutely. It would not have gotten done as well as it was because the entire time I was on the show with you all, uh, he was back here getting everything going. And uh, I'll tell you, it's great. All the assistance I have every time I'm here is excellent. It's great to have a true professional. Here's the bread. So tell us wow. what you got. All right. So we so, got a uh, Italian loaf I like to call it. It's three cheeses with roasted tomatoes, garlic, and basil. And then uh, sourdough. Using a sourdough starter that I've had for, I don't know, five, six years now. A sourdough rye bread, and then this is a Belgian chocolate loaf. It's Belgian chocolate, a little bit of nutmeg, some black Whoa. pepper, and uh, vanilla extract. And it is uh, it's pretty dense. Oh, it's look stuff. at that. So, comedian. Ah, that's great. great, with ah, that's great. And comedian Tony so B gonna... says, why is the uh, dessert bread not cake? Why, why are we not calling it they cake? I want to know why dessert <laughs> bread isn't just considered cake. Uh, because it's made with a, uh, a high gluten flour instead of a uh, low gluten flour like cake flour. So you use bread flour and, you, you know, you have the gluten in there and, and, and cake usually has eggs and extra sugar and blah, blah, blah. So, mm-hmm. so for it's science. It's science. Science. It's science. It's science. It's all right. All right. No wonder why I didn't understand. Yeah, you, you don't right. know that. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Go, so, go serve. So the- dinner served. we got some more coming your guys' way in just a little bit. I'll come grab the plates. But, uh, yeah, we're ready to go. We're just doing backups here. Things are going great. Beautiful. All hey, right. And I, I was late to the party, but pounding the chickens, that's not a euphemism for anything, nope, is that's it? No, really pounding chicken. They were pounding chicken. They pound right. chicken, yes. Hey, that's for the joke session. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Save it, Tony. Save it. All yeah. right, so that's Mr. Jonathan Connie, and he's going to wrap it up and bring the, the food out there, and we'll get, we'll get him uh, on at the end of the show. But, Tony, thanks for coming up. Thanks for, thanks doing for this having thing. me. This is great, man. Are you kidding so me? Let me let you go out there so you can eat. Yeah. Because gonna go we're going to have you on in. Uh, going to go have some dessert bread. You can't be funny yeah. on an empty stomach. No, no. Yeah, about 40 minutes. Okay. You're on. Oh, I better go get now, an act. I, I, before you go, one, one thing is Dad. we have three, com- three other comedians. Yes. And I haven't seen them yet. Uh, Brad gonna, is here. Oh, Brad is here. Okay. I see Brad. All right. You'll know when Christine's here. When yeah. Christine's here. The room will set on yeah. fire. Yeah, yeah. Nothing to worry about? No. All right. No, no. I mean, I talked to everybody today, and they're all, right. all on board. Okay. You know, I told them what time the show starts. But, all right. You know, these are comedians you're dealing with. All right. <laughs> <laughs> they think it's you funny know, to show are, up a little bit right, late. These are not regular employees who go, I, I got to get there and punch in. They go, nah, I'll get there when I get there. All right. Yeah. Very good. That'll Very be good. fine. Tony all right. V, everybody, you're going to see him up on stage in about 40 minutes. It's going to be little, great. It's gonna it be is. Great. If they don't all show up, you're just going to have to do the full 40 yourself. Uh, no, no. We'll, we'll get you involved. <laughs> Joe Yannetti's here. Oh, we'll we'll, we'll still have a show. I'm not worried. I get I get Barry involved. Ed will tell some jokes. Made an appearance yeah. a while ago. Oh, Laugh Track Larry was he here. He was here, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tony, are you going to. I miss him. Can you do any whale jokes? I, I might do some whale jokes tonight. Right. You know, I'm stuck on Just, whale uh, jokes. Hey, I, I resemble those jokes. <laughs> yeah, no. no jokes no, about the... Slam Dini. I need that for my act. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, these are real whales. Real. Actual whales, yeah. I'm stuck on whales right, right now, so we'll see. All right. Okay, go get them. Go right. eat. Dinner is served, uh, everybody in the other room. Uh, I think everything is ready to go, so I can see uh, them making their way over to it. We tried turning the camera around because we had um, Michael Herklotz yeah. on the show last week, and he was like, you've got to turn the camera around and show people what we're looking at because it's very impressive. It's Whoa. the bread. Just that. Sourdough. Rye. Rye. Italian. Italian bread. 
and chocolate. Oh, he took it. I want one of... He's got multiple of each. Hey, and Jonathan ain't going to eat any, what right? The, what the you can hell? have mine, buddy. You can have his. What a, what a shame. If which, I'm cheating, I want some break. Pass Dro- that down. Yeah, we're going to do this. He we're almost had a heart attack that you almost left I without... one of these. One letting of these, him get the chocolate break. Cho- I'm going to try the chocolate for us. And one of those, and I'll let you bring that over there. The good thing is, with the... Mike Brennerich. With the, uh, the crowd noise, we can't really hear him smacking his lips all that much. A little bit. It's, oh, my God. There. Wow. I haven't eaten real bread in I don't know how long. This is the one they eat. Mm-hmm. Holy mackerel. Uh, Jonathan, while they're doing it, go, go over the pitches while I'm eating of, 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 the, <laughs> of the three um, three things that are available. All right. So we have the Bit Pack. This is six cigars for fifty nine ninety nine, and it features the LFD Double Hero 660 Natural and the 660 Maduro. You have the LFD 300 Oscuro. You have the LFD 400 Oscuro and the 500 Oscuro. And in addition to all of that, one Joke and Smoke exclusive cigar that we're smoking now. Up next, you have the Gag Pack, which is nine cigars for $99.99. That's the La Volcada by LFD. Don't judge me. Capitulo Doso. The judgment happened a long time ago, buddy. Double the Hero Chisel Maduro. Oro Tubo number six. The 654 Maduro, the 452 Maduro, the L400 Oscuro, you get one Joke and Smoke exclusive cigar, and in addition to that, the LFD event only cigar. And then we're going to combine those two packs. That's the LOL pack, right on twoguyscigars.com, and that stands for Lots of LaFleur. Oh, man. 20 cigars for $199.99 and includes free shipping. You're going to get all the cigars mentioned, all 15 of them. Plus five more special cigars. We're going to add an additional LFD event-only cigar and three extra Joke and Smoke cigars. So that'll be two event-only cigars and a five-pack of the Joke and Smokes. In addition to that, an LFD Tomahawk cigar from last year's Gourmet Smoke Session. And that's not all. We're also throwing in an autographed cookbook. And we are going to give the money to charity for the cookbook as though you bought it. But it's free. Along with shipping is free. That's 20 cigars, eight of them being very rare. For $199.99, plus free shipping, and again, the Cigar Authority Cookbook, which has the recipes that we featured here tonight at the dinner. And look, the line is crazy for the food, and uh, there's been no complaints. After all that bread, you want to pass me down some sangria? Sangria. Got to wash it down. Got to wash it down. Don't be shy this time. I was... uh, The sandwiches are are out of sight. Crazy good, man. Thank you, sir. Crazy all right, I can't have you guys be the only ones drinking, so it's, I'm just going to reach into my pocket here. It's good. And pull out a flask of something that I can... Oh, no. That you can have? So wait a minute. Like, you're in love with Perdomo, and you won't drink Janine's sangria? I, it's the sugar. I can't do the sugar. It'll, it'll throw my system all off. You'll get bloated. You'll remember get, the, you'll get remember the cake? Remember the cake Bob incident? more weight. Mm-hmm. I right. had the cake from the show, and I was messed up all day. Jacks me up. Something mm-hmm. wrong. So let, let me say a little pitch here on the bread, which is outstanding. The Italian, the third one. Mm. Why do I turn everything into a contest? I had all four, and I had to take <laughs> and try to pick which one was See, best. When they're all great. My one is the one with the Belgian chocolate. Yeah. It, it was different, but I'd go with the, the third one, which I believe was Italian. That bread. was the Italian. It was great. Uh, Crust Crave Bread Company in Newburyport, Mass. Crust Crave Bread Company. And... Um, that, that's uh, Dylan Rutherford. He's the chef. And for the right amount of money, he'll, he'll cater a meal for you. He's wow. good. He's very good. Just sandwiches on the bread. You could have all the different breads and then all kinds of sandwich meats. Don't, don't get him into trouble. That's, no. He doesn't like making sandwiches. No, you, people <laughs> make the sandwiches. You have the bread. Right. You've done all the meats and make all the sandwiches you We want. could have a sandwich station. Maybe we'll have an event where he comes in and brings all the bread. It's all sliced. And he's then you listening. have the meats out. He's listening. He's either going to get turned off to this or say this is the greatest thing ever. He's, he was me, saying out back, man. He was saying out back, this is the most unbelievable event. It's the best thing he's cooked for. He's loving yeah? it. He's loving it. Okay, and later we're going to have Gianna's peanut butter cookies. Again, I tasted them many times, but I, I just had to make sure last night. Oh, you did. So I, gotta, I mean, we glossed over something here, and it's so infrequent that you make a mistake that you admit to. Yeah. <laughs> what happened with the limoncello? I messed up. Drank it? Nope, I never asked. Ah. Uh, because she would have done it in two seconds. She would have. Your mom's a lot like you. You say, okay, in three months would've I need limoncello, done. and it's done in three days. Yeah. 
Oh, boy. And Sorry, make, Ma. I know she's listening. And she makes the best limoncello I've ever had. Yeah. I, for, I forgot. I see her every day. Talk about all kinds of different things. But uh, completely think, spaced it until last night. And I'm like, oh, no. Do you think that maybe you didn't space it? Do you think maybe you have early onset Alzheimer's? No. <laughs> I get so many things going on at once. <laughs> Dave still remembers things I did the second day I worked here. Mm. So his memory's just fine. Yeah, he still bought him. <laughs> More sangria. That's the Janine Perdomo More sangria. everything. More <laughs> everything. Get the man a meatball for crying. Come on, the meatball was meatball good. Was All right, it's the last thing. I'm going to have it now. I wasn't able to eat Roy's because I'm allergic to walnuts. Oh. So that would have been comedic to some people if I had a allergic what would reaction. Happen? I'd break out in hives. I'd Puff up, swell up. 20 bucks. Go ahead. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What part of you swells up? 50. <laughs> I'll do it for 50. Oh. Um, not the good parts. The peanut butter with the bacon and the banana yeah. and the butter on the bread. And a little if people who are listening honey. aren't hungry, weren't hungry when the show started, they're hungry now. I'm you got to get the cookbook, and you got to make the recipes that are in it. Yeah. You, you know what makes that, that meatball good? Did you make them? Yeah, from scratch. Ah, it doesn't taste like you made them. They don't, sound, they don't taste like desperation right now. Mm. <laughs> I figured Carney made them because they actually had flavor. No, that's all me. Wow. That's all me. Very impressive. I made 136 meatballs. He's it's asking if, six pounds. if we're ready for our food. I said, yeah, bring it on. Mm -hmm. I got a couple more bites of bread to eat, but <laughs> bread is good. Uh, he said sourdough, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's, you can tell it's high glu gluten. Mm -hmm. High gluten flour, yeah. yeah. Which is the best pizza dough, too. When you I like it. the sourdough rye that had that. That would be the place to go to if you were going to make pizzas in your pizza oven. You go to him and you say, give me the bread Ooh. dough and proof it yourself at home a couple days well, before. Well, ask him, make me pizza dough, because I think it's a more, more stretchy type Thing? I don't know. Can we talk it? about the cigar for a moment? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like puffing away on it. I'm halfway done. You're digging that. And I don't, I, like, I was living in Miami at the time, so we're probably talking 2012, maybe 2013. La Florida Dominicana came out with a limited edition Candela yeah. for St. Patrick's Day, which at the time, and probably still to this day, if I had to think about it, was the best Candela I ever had. This is very reminiscent with that cigar, but there's more of that Lajero spice to I it. I would put the three yeah, candelas that I can think of off the top of my head in this order. Mm -hmm. That candela, which was exceptional. Mm -hmm. Then you have the Fumarian by Skip. Mm -hmm. And then this is definitely number one. The, the balance between the fillers this and is that not just wrapper. For me, right? <clears throat> it doesn't have sure. that vegetal component. It, it's very, very subtle, but they, they did a great job balancing that out so that you still get what you're looking for. You're getting some candela flavor. There's Mr. Jonathan Connie with the it's, plates. Right here. Camera's right here. There you go. Look, look at that way. You see it? Yeah, yeah. He, knows, he knows how the game is played. Jim Price's coffee, yeah, exactly. Jim Price's coffee rubbed Sherwin. Filet mignon. Yeah, hang on. I got to ask Jim Price. Did he do okay? He hasn't had it. He hasn't, uh, had, it hasn't had it. Grab a bite. Check that Ta out. Yeah, take a piece. Take a piece. Go ahead, fingers are fine. John Carney's potatoes. Is your phone up the volume on that? And then we've got the Mr. Jonathan's Pomodoro. So we've got the Mr. Jonathan's Pomodoro. And then we have Mickey Peg's St. Louis Caesar. All right, that's a party. Don't All right. Tea. So we have to share this. Yeah, there's plenty more. I mean, yeah. This, this is the first run. So I is don't. salad never? No, thank you. Anytime Mr. Jonathan Carney can rub my meat, I'm all in. It's not your meat. Here you go. Well, Barry. it's going to be in my belly. <laughs> oh, you yeah. ate the bread, now eat the salad. And uh, while, they're, while they're eating, I'm just going to go over these packs one more time. One more time. So we have the bit pack. Who took the potatoes? You made them up yourself. That wasn't on the list. Right? All right, listen. Only one, of us, only one of us can be talking. So I'm going to do the pitch, and you're going to be quiet and eat over there. <laughs> all right, one more bite of this. So we have the bit pack, which is six cigars for $59.99. It features... The Double Lajero 660 Natural, the DL660 Maduro, mm. the L300 Oscuro, the L400 Oscuro, and the L500 Oscuro, Excuse and me. one Joke and Smoke exclusive cigar. The pasta is spicy as hell. You'd for love it. $59.99. You'd love it. Then you have the Gag Pack, which is nine cigars for $99.99. It features the La Volcada, 
The Capitulo Dos, Double Ajero Chisel Maduro, Oro Tubo Number 6, 654 Maduro, 452 Maduro, L400 Oscuro, the Joke and Smoke Exclusive Cigar, and the LFD Only Cigar. Now, if you get the LOL pack, this is standing for Lots of La Flor Dominicana. 20 <laughs> cigars for $199.99. Includes free shipping. You're going to get all the cigars featured in both of the packs. That's 15 total, plus five more special cigars. You're going to get two of the LFD event-only cigars and three additional Joke and Smoke cigars for a five-pack and the LFD Tomahawk cigar from last year's Gourmet Smoke Session and also the autographed, that's autographed, that's right, yeah. even Barry Stein signed it, I saw him, yep. cookbook, the Cigar Authority cookbook, Little and we're going to give the money to charity. A little surprising that Mr. Jonathan Connie signed them all too. Huh. Because he's here. So we said, and he why may not? as well. So that's 20 cigars for $199.99, eight of those cigars being extremely limited and rare, plus free shipping, plus the free cookbook, and all that money goes to charity for the cookbook. That's a good time. The pastas. Week. I did a pasta dish myself. You outdid my pasta dish. The really? spice on it. Oh, my God. And, and what's the little crunch that's in there? Is it garlic? There's, there's garlic. <clears throat> Garlic in and of itself tomatoes. is spicy. It yeah, has, yeah, it has a well, component garlic is to a, it. In my opinion, garlic is a spice. Sure. Um, it's not an herb by any means. Um, so uh, there's chili powder, a little cayenne pepper, and then the crunchy guts, garlic, and the uh, diced tomatoes. The, the steak. Dave doesn't typically eat uh, diced tomatoes because he says they're as in their larval state. No, yeah, as long as they're They cooked. haven't been turned into food yet. Yeah. I got a bottle of Mount Veter in the back if you want a nice glass too. But uh, no, it's it, everything came out really great. Dylan was Dylan's been fantastic. I mean, having an actual professional so chef. The coffee is uncooked co ground coffee. Yeah, I did Duncan Duncan special blend. Really? Yeah. Jimmy Price is cringing over there. Yeah, he's like, oh god, we already talked about well, it. Well, because he's kind of a coffee nerd too. Well, the, 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 this was cooked in a large amount, so oh. the way that it came out to have some crust is actually pretty good. That there's actually crust on it. Um, so the, the key factor is we let the beef sit and dry before we cooked it, so it wasn't sitting in its own juices. Yeah. And then we, we this was just oven cooked. Um, so we're, Jimmy and I are both so cringing tender, because so the, the goal with coffee rubbed is to have a nice sear, and so you get a great crust. But we, we really were able to imitate a decent crust on it for a large group wow. and have it be cooked consistent. So. And the yeah, whole, I find the whole thing with steak is to have it be drier before you cook it. Mm, and oh, whether yeah. it's patting it dry with a paper towel, that'll do the trick. Yeah. But really, you want to sit that out at the very least overnight well, in the refrigerator. I, I agree. And that's why, personally, I love dry, dry aged beef. Yeah. Is because the moisture is either gone or in the muscle. There's only one place that it's going to be. And um, it really creates a better. Uh, you know, mouthfeel and dining experience. You can also drive opinion. that salt into the meat. Yep. I'm a huge fan of three to five days myself in the fridge. I'm not, I don't buy steaks to eat today. Mm -hmm. I buy steaks that I'm going to eat in a week. Do you notice the background is much it quieter? quieter, a lot. Those people are chowing down in there. Yeah. They're digging it. They're, they're right there, but it's pretty quiet. A lot of smiles in their faces. They haven't even been told jokes yet. And they're very happy. I'm real happy with the way every, everything came out. I'm glad the items that, that were picked, um, you know, that we decided on. The, the sangria has been a big hit. Janine's mm. recipe was excellent. Uh, yeah. But coincidentally, so I made everything to recipe. Yes. There were certain things that I do make on my own that were there. You know, I have my own grilled cheese. I think Roy's was really labor intensive, but it was delicious. Yeah. The, the grilled cheese. But the sangria was about two, only two minor ingredients that I would add to change that a little bit. You would add. You, yep. would, you wouldn't subtract. No, there's two. Two. I would add. Normally, I add pineapple juice. Okay. Um, so pineapple juice would be added to it, and then I add like a cranberry juice just to kind of give it you know, tartness. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah. a little sweet and sour. But this is excellent, excellent. and it's not surprising. It's Cuban style, I think she said, which means there's more alcohol. Wow. <laughs> Less juice, more alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. There's brandy. That's a win. Uh, wine, orange juice, lemon juice, yeah. lime juice, and uh, grenadine. Yeah, it's delicious. Delicious. So what they have to do, so you understand what's happening here in the Dueling Comedian segment of it, the comedians are going to come on, and Tony's going to host, Tony we had on the show, he's going to be the host, and he's going to introduce the comedians, and he's going to do a little little bit. Yeah, he's going to do his little bit yeah. first. And, and this then... is going to be very short. We're talking about 10, 12 minutes yeah. per there, so they're going to have to give their best stuff up. 
uh, as fast as they can. And um, he's going to bring on each guest each time. He's going to jump back in and bring the next person on the next person. And um, at the end of it, everybody has this little ballot. Mm -hmm. And the ballot has all four of them on here. And at, after they hear all four, they can't do it beforehand because you have to actually listen to all four of them. Even though your loved one, you know, it, it's the rotation of where they go is what happens. They're going to check somebody off. They're going to put all the ballots in. We're going to come back on after the comedians come on. And then we're going to just check the ballots, see who wins, and they're going to get awarded the uh, belt yep. this year. And then we'll have three winners. I think we go one more year, have a fourth winner, and then two years from now we bring all the champions battle on. Battle of champions. And get a battle of champions or something like that. Uh, Tom, Tom Criswell has a question for the real Mr. J. I will be happy to answer that. He, he I'll be says, easily, easily give the answer. He's, to he's asking if this cigar is sugar tipped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would have been a funny thing. I, 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 the you sugar guys tip would thing. Never do that. I mean, no, I would never do that. I mean, it's just it's. Yeah, it, you know, I'm not going to give it. <laughs> Say it. Say I, it. I, I, did, I did get some. I did get some great things out of that. And Sock and I ended up having a fun time. I, I think there's a whole bunch of new things I could give him a hard time about now. So maybe he's something yeah, on and go after him. I mean, there's all, all sorts of stuff going yeah. on that I could give him a hard time about. <laughs> well, we got him coming up. Uh, I think sometime in January. Yeah, that's what the, you said. The cigar's not sugar tip. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is not. This is Candela, which is bad on its own, I would say. <laughs> you know, bad. it's not. I don't know if anybody ever mentions, but this is something I get from specifically our Candela and the way that it works with our tobacco. It's very uh, aromatic. It's almost pipe tobacco-ish, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Like, I get a lot of pipe tobacco Wait, taste from this. It's very sure aromatic. Like there is cigar no pipe would, you get the, veg the vegetation portion of the flavor of Candela kind of goes away, and yeah. you get the sweetness that's left, and I think that's what you're meaning by pipe tobacco. True, 100%. It's kind of like when, you're, when you started to lose all this, this significant weight, all of those negative things went away, and we're just left with the sweetness. Oh, yeah, nice. Are you picking what, up what he's putting down over here? Uh, so, jo uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Jonathan yes. Carney, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> would you ever consider making a cigar with pipe tobacco? No. <laughs> no. No. I'm no. just asking. It's no. wrong. No. It's wrong. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Can no. we go back to making fun of me? <laughs> so are the are the head? are the comedians in the green room right now? Is this the green room off the left? That's this the is the green room, but they are out there enjoying. They're, they're, oh, they're outside in the deck. Okay, they're out in. The oh, deck. they're hiding from the smoke. By the way, it's a beautiful day out today. Oh, yeah, what, a, what a perfect day so for this. Lucky. It was about seventy degrees. Right? Hey, too bad we didn't have this last year when I was physically cooking outdoors. Outside. Right. <laughs> Right. Right. Last year it was cold and raining, right? And he had a little tent set and you up. Made, you made tomahawk steaks last year. Mm -hmm. This was tougher? Oh, much harder. Really? Mm. Because the way you did it, slow, you put a little heat, you take it off for a long period of time, put it back on. It so we were, last year was a tasting type concept. But even if it was a full meal, it would have been simply just the same. Cause you're cooking one thing. And you're just, there's a routine, right? When I'm cooking this, there was... The grilled cheese sandwich had 12 ingredients. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> the tomahawk steak, tomahawk steak had three. Steak, salt, and olive oil. That yeah. was it. <laughs> right. So, I mean, that sandwich had 12 ingredients. Tony V's had like seven ingredients, and it was a simple sandwich. That's mm -hmm. why some people should not be scared of cooking something like a tomahawk steak. You say, oh, my God, I'm not really a cook. It's so expensive and all this stuff. Is. And yet you make elaborate peanut butter sandwiches. Right. It's tough to do I that. have to say, but, the, the person that taught me how to cook a steak was John Carney. Well before we did, had done the tomahawks, he had come in with some of those. Uh, he had a, you had a wagyu, mm -hmm. you had a, a drop, what twenty one day old. We did Pat Lafrida steaks. That was a few years back when I was into the. I was buying a lot of dry aged Pat Lafrida, yeah. and then obviously now uh, my friends at Meat and Bone out of Miami. I feel like I'm a NASCAR driver with my sponsors. I'd like to thank my friends at Meat and Bone <laughs> and uh, the friends at Two Guys Smoke Shop and the Cigar Authority. Way to um, go, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, I was really into that, and it, for me. It's very easy in people's minds, to, and they're concerned about screwing up a piece of beef or screwing anything up. Who cares? Like, make it good. And again, some of the elaborate things that are out there that people make, like Roy's a good cook. Yeah, I mean, I, he's a very good cook. And and but that sandwich, somebody say, like, oh, I'm going to make a grilled cheese sandwich, and every, everyone has their own concept of a grilled cheese. That was ridiculously annoying to do that. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It was so over the top. Again, tastes so great though. 
Yeah, but the it payoff was, was unbelievable. And if you were making that for a, a small dinner party of five or six, that's a different story. Mm-hmm. What do you got? What do you got? I mean, one hundred Gary, not eating on your plate. <laughs> the uh, Roy Kirby's uh, sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Send it down the that's it over. Nothing's going to waste here today because this stuff is the best thing I ever had. So oh, one in I the, gotta uh, say, it's the best meal it's I ever had. The one in the corner. What's I, that in the upper left? The bottom left. This here. Oh, uh, salad. Barry. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I thought maybe Barry vomited a little. There's not it's much good. of that salad left either, huh? The, the um, there's salad over oh, here. Oh, all right. I will say the one that was the most surprising to me was the grilled cheese sandwich. Not just the effort, the one who it. It was a, that's a damn good combination, and he left nothing. And there's nothing on that that I would add. I would do different. You can make a different style, but that's a complete item. Like, I mean, it was, it was perfect. And I tried it before I put the butterscotch on. And I was like, oh, that's pretty good. Then I put the butterscotch on. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. What a, a different great animal. grilled cheese sandwich. And butterscotch is one of my favorite things in the year. Like, my wife makes this thing with uh, um, melted morsels of butterscotch with the potato sticks in them. For the holidays, I forget what she calls them. But Butterscotched pre- potato sticks? No, nah, there's a name for them, but I used to eat them like candy. They are candy. <laughs> By the way, we, Dylan made 11 loaves of bread. So you, you may... I mean, End up you're, having you're, to you're king, some You're king off. in this palace. You may get to take some chocolate bread home with you if you want. There we go. Mm-hmm. The folks at home he are liked, happy to hear that. He liked the Italian... Uh, Oh, the that cheese one, was, uh, cheese one was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. What? Was cheese the and Italian, the Italian yeah. one, the third one? Yeah, tomato basil with three Italian cheeses. Wow. They're called haystacks, nope. by the way. I had to look it up. Yeah, no wonder why I liked it so much. Like haystacks Calhoun? If you eat enough of them, you look like him. <laughs> Coincidentally, I met Dylan through someone with the last name Calhoun. Wow. So, full circle. All ties together. I think not. <laughs> There's seven degrees of separation. Whatever it is. That was fantastic. I didn't eat lunch today. I'm ready, I'm, I'm ready for seconds. I'm glad he said he made a lot. <clears throat> yeah. The one item I would change a little bit. Say the meatballs and I'll punch you right in the throat. <laughs> but it was a good meatball. <laughs> Thank you. Very good meatball. I, I liked your meatball when we you always the like competition. The yeah, I, yeah. I just appreciate the way you cook. Um, the, the chicken fingers. I would change the breading. What? I would change the breading. Parmesan? Was it Parmesan? No, no. I would, I would add some Parmesan. Yeah. I would add some other stuff. I'd probably add some lemon zest to give it a little kick. Mm. Uh, he did get cayenne pepper in there, but I think we either could have added a bunch more. Yep. Maybe we didn't add enough, but it, when you deep fry things, some, like peppers, and when you deep fry, I, I've talked about this before. Like I don't put pepper on steak because it burns. So right. It cooks off, uh, essentially. So I feel like the cayenne pepper, when the deep, we deep fried in the back. Yeah. When it hit the oil, pss, cooked it off. So I, there was no, I didn't get any spice from it. So I, I wanted to add some, maybe some more acid, maybe a little more spice. Yeah. Um, I may, might not have followed the recipe exact on that one, but I would make a couple adjustments. But it was good. And, and Dylan crushed the chicken. I mean, it came out freaking yeah. cooked. It wasn't dry. He was like checking the temp. He was deep frying and temping the chicken. So it was like perfect, 165. I mean, it was incredible. He's a professional. Every, everything was fantastic, I got to say. Some people are starting to make their way out here because we're getting ready. It's getting closer and closer as it's going on. Some cheers are coming out. We'll have the comedians on just shortly. But uh, let's go over um, the list one more time. And with Connie jumping in and tell us about these, these cigars that are in here. Um, the bit pack that we have here has six cigars. It's fifty nine ninety nine. It has a little Flor Dominicana, Double the Hero, 6x60, Natural, and Maduro. What do we need to know about that? <laughs> Apparently that's me <laughs> in the back. Oh, all right. So the, the, we're at the bit pack here. You've got you've got the home of Lejero in one pack here. Lejero cabinet 300, 400, 500. Those are the top three selling sizes in that. Oscuro meaning darker than Maduro. It means black essentially. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's, it's a color description yeah. less more than where Maduro is an aging and fermentation process. And that's not that's one that it's not super strong. It's actually very sweet. Oh, it's it's very good, very very good. It, it doesn't bore it, for me. It's a full bodied cigar, but it's it's very smooth and on the palate for sure. And then the Double Arrow Six Sixty Natural Maduro. Those are uh, five inches by sixty ring gauge. Uh, all of these cigars have been back ordered for like six months. Yeah. <laughs> so they're here. We could. We held on to them. <laughs> yeah. Just so other retailers say, and, uh, hey, you got them and you got them in because of the event and stuff. 
we saved these things. We hang on to them. Not only did you them. save, but you also ordered like eight months in advance yeah. getting ready for this I thing. I know it works. Um, but yeah, no, so some great stuff in there. Honestly, that pack for me is is around what I smoke in terms of full body. Okay, and then you get the Joke and Smoke Cigar with it, so that rounds out the six of them. So that we'll call that the, the Lajero pack, basically. The next we have is the Gag Pack, a 99.99, nine cigars, and you have the Lavacada in this. Lavacada's in there, that's the, uh, the, uh, the Uruguayan, uh, you know, dance-themed cigar. Yeah. The Lavacada is the dip, uh, where the man dips the woman. Mm. Um, and then it also has the Oro Tubo, which is actually my favorite LFD regular production line. Could you dip a man and have it You can dip count? anybody, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Right. You're you're not not gonna eat a dipper as long as you're not, I do both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> La Flor de Benacana Oro Tubo, that is ranked the most full-bodied cigar by uh, the cigar Scar Authority. Authority. Yeah, I, it, and for me, I don't smoke over the top full body, but the reason why my father smokes this cigar off and on, he's like, man, he goes, that's so strong. It's yeah, full yeah. body, but it's also full flavored. So you got a lot of it, it parades oh, it's, around it's as even stronger yeah. than what it is because of the aggressive flavor profile. And it's mid, it's mid palate, so it's that front mid palate. So it's almost to the front of your palate. Um, At so the you, end of that cigar, that, that, that's yeah. the last cigar of the day for me. Yeah. If I'm smoking yeah. it. Well, that's yeah. my favorite regular production line in that one. Uh, Chisel Maduro's in there, the Double Hero Chisel Maduro. Again, very full bodied. Capitulos Dos, not so much. Not not too full body. No, I I, I, yeah. I tend to, it's it's supposed to be fuller, but I think that's I think it's settled in in the last six years as a is a nice medium body blend. I'm okay with that. I'm okay. Your 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 pro your profile has definitely gotten stronger though. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. it has over the last it's turning into a five man. years I'd say. So, yeah. Slowly, slowly. <laughs> LFD 654 Maduro, the 452 Maduro, the L400 Oscuro, now the Maduro, a joke and smoke exclusive cigar that we have here, and the LFD event only cigar, which is what? What is the event only cigar? It's uh, undisclosed. I can't tell you. Can't tell you. That's it. I'm yeah, disclosed can't everything. All right. Yeah, that's this nine well, cigars that's the end for that, ninety nine ninety nine. How good does that pack on the left look, though? This is the big With the lineup. It's All the right. big so boy. This is the big. This is the big boy. This is the everything we told you about, along with an extra La Flor Dominicana event only cigar, two instead of one. That's the one we can't tell you about. He can't tell you about it. I'd tell you if I knew. The other one is three extra joke and smoke cigars, so you get the full five pack. Is right. that the way they come in the packaging that they come? So cool to have like that. And from last year, an LFD Tomahawk cigar mm. that we hung on to. So you, you, would, I didn't know about that. And <clears throat> there's stuff that we talk about yeah. and we get surprised about or whatever that we may have some sort of. Idea. I had literally no idea until Ed walked in tonight. He's like, oh, we're going to throw a tomahawk in there. But you, you intentionally held on to those. Correct, correct. Let me <laughs> save on to some for today and after today. That's going to be it. Yeah. Um, and that's not all. We're going to throw in an autographed cookbook, Cigar Authority cookbook. All the recipes that you ate tonight are in here and a lot more. Someone offered us $100 for an autographed cookbook. They did. They wanted had- that money to go to charity. This money's going to charity. And it's autographed by all of us, including Mr. Jonathan Connie, uh, which makes it very special. It's not Mr. Spe- anything. Speaking of the charity, did you send your money to them yet? Of course. Yes. All right. We're all in, all in now. All in. So Tom's 200 got 600 more. That's yep. good. Boom. Uh, 20 cigars, 199 That's eight rare cigars. Free shipping on that pack, too. Add to that whatever shipping costs. And uh, that will go out. As soon as you order, how do they do it, Barry? You're going to go to twoguyscigars.com. It's the easiest way to do it. All right, on the front page, you're going to see this bright orange, almost obnoxious graphic. Click it. It will take you to the page where you can select the pack of your choice, and it should be the LOL pack. LOL pack. LOL. Ready to go. It's got a smile on its face. Everything's good. People are pouring out. They're trying to get the last of the people uh, to come in. We'll wait till we get everybody in here and then turn it over to the comedians. Uh, while I have you guys here, we're getting ready for our next event. It will not be on the, on the Cigar Authority. We're just doing it here at Two Guys. But November 30th, each year, we've been doing this for many, many years. It is Winston Churchill's birthday, probably the most famous um, cigar smoker ever. It's his 147th birthday, and we're celebrating here at 6 o'clock. Oh, just to, be, smoke just to be clear, he's dead. He's dead. Okay. He's dead. Oh, I thought maybe he came back, <laughs> no, like one, Elvis. 147 years old. Are we going to eat his sandwich? <laughs> we are going to eat, and that, that menu has not been determined yet, but uh, you're going to get two Davidoff cigars, a scotch pairing, and dinner, $59.99. Go to Two Guys 
uh, stores and get your ticket or call us at 603-898-2221 or call 888-2-CIGAR-2 and order um, Winston Churchill. What I like to do is real events. Yeah. You know, I, w- I want to make it's some be an special experience. experience. Yeah. This certainly was an experience. I, I've, I've got such a great idea that just popped into my head from the Winston oh Churchill boy. thing. Yeah. We're going to do it sometime. We'll talk. Now, the, when, every next time I bring something up, it ends up costing you a ton of freaking so money. Just, <laughs> just so you look around here, that this here, Studio 21, is here because of Mr. Jonathan Carney, that he left the event and then says, I got to talk to you and talk for two hours driving to Maine and came up with the concept of what I needed to do here. And I was so on board, I got no sleep that night. I worked all weekend. You, you sent me together. a business plan on Monday. Yes, because <laughs> I worked on it all the time. I said, this is it. This is it. And here it is all these years. Here it is, your place. Mm. There should be a little something on the wall or something. Uh, I'm the wrong guy to tell these I'll things give you, to. I'll give you a, a pat, pat on the back, on the back. Uh, If a good, good idea comes from somebody, I'm happy to do it. So be careful what you say to me because I'm the guy to do it. I'm just surprised that he idea. gave you credit for it because it normally just becomes his idea. What, 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 I very much appreciate that as a chef. Like, I've been trying to give Dylan a lot of credit for what's going on. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's the John Carney yeah. show out here. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's telling me, hey, great job on the bread. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bread's over the top. So we were thinking with him when we mentioned that you guys were cooking, you probably didn't hear us saying it. He comes out with all these breads, and then we bring meats and cheeses, and you build your own sandwich. So that you're not doing it. Part of my idea involves that. I yeah. can't mention it here. All right. We'll talk about it after. It's amazing. All right. Yeah, all right. Like well, we just for the it. record, I came up with the idea <laughs> first then. <laughs> sure. Right. We're uh, less than 10 minutes away. Less He's got than a 10 regular person away. walking into the green room like that's, he owns the place. That's not a regular person. That's, that's the, 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 the champion. The reigning champ. That I mean, is the reigning champion. Last champion. year's I've champion. S- yeah, I've seen him before. He's somebody special and somebody important, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> He's the reigning champion, and he was supposed to be on a cruise, but he said, screw the cruise. I want to go there and see what my competition is going to be. I heard he was fired for <laughs> telling too many <laughs> dick- oh, jokes. He brought his belt. So... Mm. Uh, I don't know where Ed went, um, because what I'd like to do now is... Oh, he is passing them out. They're pa- you guys get a cigar, the second cigar? Yes, you yeah. got it. All right, so the second cigar. Uh, John, tell our audience what the second cigar is. It's the uh, Joke and Smoke. Yes. Yeah, so everyone here, first of all, thank you all for coming out. Because their first time. cigar was the event-only cigar. The first correct. cigar you had was our event cigar, but now you've got the official Joke and Smoke Gourmet Smoke Session exclusive made just for comedy just for tonight um the cigar will pair great with anything it's up to the comedians if it pairs well with their <laughs> jokes so but yeah double claro candela wrapper green got a lot of great flavor to it and uh, really really special it looks great to how our, does to how our does, knowledge i think that's the only box press i, I, I think so yeah ever. i haven't seen one how does uh the higher ups at lfd feel about you branding yourself <laughs> and doing the cooking along with LFD events. Uh, I, great. I, I, so through the grapevine, we, we talk, but we don't talk a lot. That's one unique thing uh, that we have. We're a small company. When we talk, we get stuff done, and then we talk again every 30 days. We have a big sit-down. Um, but through the grapevine, I've heard that uh, uh, it's been excellent for them. I mean, it's a great way to represent the brand. Um, it's really forward-thinking. I'm not just saying I'm forward-thinking, but it's a forward-thinking style of well, event. Well, because it, you're taking... I mean, we do events, real events all the time here too, guys, but this is giving a mm-hmm. cigar shop that may not be comfortable thinking outside the box an yeah. outside-of-the-box opportunity. Yeah, and uh, no, it's been great. It was, it was When I pitched it to Lido and Inez, it, 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 they were all in on it. Um, they were interested in the way that the, the business side of it was working, and now that we've done 14... Of these, obviously, it's it's uh, okay. It's huge. They, they I mean, love, we're they're loving it. Yeah, this is so 14. We have two more left. Uh, we have one more with uh, with a friend of ours here in New Hampshire, and that's going to happen in early February. That'll be number 15, and then number 16 will be happening with our friend Jeff Bershowitz down in in uh, Orlando, uh, where I currently live now, and that will be the grand finale mm-hmm. of season one, and then season two has already been talked about, and we're good to go. Uh, so no, Lido and Inez have loved it. It's been excellent. Uh, it's it, what a great thing to have where I think cigar events got stagnant because yeah. selling, trying to sell somebody something's not an event. That's a sales push and a promotion, whatnot. 
experiences are where it's at, and for sure. not just trying to do one, actually creating a real experience. I mean, this is a real experience night. Yeah. Go out and do what you did tonight at anywhere in the planet. You can't do it. You yes. can't get the meal for that price. No. You can't get the cigars for that price. You can't get the drinks we have for that price. You can't get any of that. So you bring a gourmet experience. You'd be experience. at $75 yeah. just on that filet mignon. Yeah. So you bring a gourmet experience with high-end cigars. I mean, in my opinion, there's nothing better than this. And I've, I, I've said this all along. I dare any company to try to top these things. I dare you. Right. I dare you. A rising tide will raise all ships. If somebody else stepped up and tried to do it, it's just going to make everybody I'd, better. I'd love, I'd love them to do it because it would be good for the whole entire industry, and that's what I think you bring on with something like this. So, uh, John Connie, thanks a million for this, uh, and I want to hear your story after that. But uh, we're going to get ready to bring the comedians on. We're going to have to clear the stage off and all that. Um, I don't know how we do this. I'm going to, I'm going to keep talking. And you, you keep guys talking. Start clearing it off, and I'll be the last to walk out. I kind of cleared my stuff the best I could. All right. And uh, I'll tell you a little about... Yeah, we're not going to have dead air because I'll keep talking. You can me leave and, me live me too, and Ed, Ed can, I'll stay up here. All right. Me and Ed can chat. I can move the chairs. Um, this Saturday on the Cigar Authority, we have the contenders for the Cigar oh. of the Year. So we have seven contenders this year. And uh, that was a battle as, as we thought it would be. Yep. But we have it all put together. and we're I'm going gonna, gonna to move it over. <clears throat> We're going we're gonna, to uh, let you know what that is. And one of those contenders will become the Cigar of the Year, as it has since 1992. Thanks, Barry. Uh, and I'm going to try to finish both these cigars because they are special, and I'll go to and, and relight that first one later. Um, what else? We have um, the, uh, the after show, which the after show is going to be interesting also. I'm trying to think what, what that subject was. I did some... Um, oh, it was um, the company that um, sold Altadas. Um, they had their um, financials come in this week. Right. And I went through it. And they said the biggest boom they've ever had was selling off the cigar company. Really? Very interesting. Uh, remember, they're a big cigarette giant mm -hmm. and uh, Imperial Tobacco. They sold off Altadas. Uh, the Cuban side and the U.S. side of premium cigars. They kept the machine-made stuff, and they saw the biggest profit ever. And part of that is because premium cigars take so long to make right. a premium cigar. It's not a smart investment, it's yeah. really. You're talking three years it's of the tobacco labor alone, of love. Yeah. a year to plant it in the ground before that. You're talking four years. You have to have years and years of inventory just in case you're not able to get it. So all that went off their books. So this $1.8 billion came off their books. Nice. And all of a sudden they said, look how profitable we are. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so uh, here, grab this stuff. Just make it as easy as you can. The drinks and all that. I guess you're going to leave an ashtray in case one of them is smoking. Okay. And, well, uh, we know Tony V will be smoking. Uh, you know what I do? I do need my notes. I need my notes just for one second because right, I... Have you a, need an intro for... I need an intro for Tony, and I wrote it, but I know Tony so well. I don't have to do it, but I will. <clears throat> and just check and see if Tony's ready. If he is, I'm ready. I'll put this over here. Sorry, everybody, for uh, doing the cleanup at the same time, but we're going to try to make this uh, as smooth as possible getting out of it. But Tony's ready. All right, should I switch... From headset to microphone? Yes, you surely can. And you are able to do it? Yep. All right. So. All righty. All right. I feel like a comedian right now. You guys hear me out there? Yes? Loud and clear, not so loud? Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up if you can. All right, and you guys keep it, keep, keep it down, and if we can get the rest of the guys out from the back room, get them out there so we can get everybody's attention. Everybody, I'm going to ask of you one thing. Keep it down these, for the comedians. That's why they're here for you to actually listen to them. You had plenty of time to talk amongst yourself. I beg of you to please keep it down so you show some respect for the comedians, okay? So first up, Tony V has been a professional stand-up comedian longer than I've been selling cigars. 
He's voted the funniest person in Massachusetts by Showtime. He was on Seinfeld, a bunch of movies, TV shows, a Super Bowl commercial you might have caught where he was in the Hyundai commercial. This car got no driver. You might remember him from that. Now you see him here and everywhere. Now that I told you that, you're going to see him every place, uh, inside and outside comedy clubs, smoking cigars. He's a real cigar smoker and a friend. How about a nice hand for Tony V? Thank you very much. Thanks, David Garofalo. How about a nice hand for David for putting this whole thing together? Yes. And, uh, and, and my buddy, Ed Sullivan, for making this sound like I don't suck. Sound reasonable. Like I don't suck yet. Yeah, yeah. reasonable. I, I yeah. can't do the material yeah. for you. It'll be good. So give everyone a second. Nice to see you here. Uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, I got to say, this is the most civilized thing I have done in quite some time, to be indoors smoking. Usually I'm out by a dumpster like a fucking animal. And I find kindred spirits among you. So uh, my first comment uh, officially is to the ladies. If any of you are here against your free will, just blink and we'll have someone come and rescue you. But it seems like you might be here <laughs> of your own free will. So we'll just keep going. Uh, thanks for coming out. And uh, I, I guess a round of applause for the food, too. That was outstanding. <laughs> Yes, the uh, peanut butter bacon uh, banana sandwich was my inspiration. Yes, because I'm a big fan of, of Elvis Presley, yes. And that was, that was the king's favorite food, and I'm pretty sure I know what fucking killed him. <laughs> it was that sandwich. That's why they found him on the shitter. He, he was trying to pass that, and it came out looking much like one of the loaves of bread, I'm sure. So we'll, we'll dispense with that right away. And it's, it's good. It's also good to see everybody unmasked and uh, happy. I know I'm in New Hampshire and you're all living free and not dying. Uh, although we could be in a super spreader right now. But I have it on good authority that the cigar smoke will kill anything. So, so I'm pretty sure we're safe on that, on that level. Like COVID would come up these stairs and go, no fucking way. I know what these people are putting in them, and uh, I'm not having it. I, I'm not going to fight that, you know. It, it was a weird time for me. The, the, I, I trust your pandemic went well. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you all write a book? Did you write a book? I did. What was the name of it? It's called John McGuire's Reading Guide. Nice. And is it self-published, or...? Nice. Where do we buy it? Wow. I've been doing that joke for about six months now. Never had anyone write a book. It, and of, and of, I, I got to say this, and I mean nothing derogatory about it. Uh, if this was the group I was going to pick where one of you wrote a book, I wouldn't have guessed it. <laughs> That it, I, I got to be honest with you. If you said you read a book, I would be, <laughs> I would be surprised. <laughs> I had a my my wife decided I'm uh, married. I got a wife of thirty years, and I got a wife uh, that uh, you know during the pandemic it was just she and I. My children are out of the house, you know, and uh, my wife's one of those people who always want to know what I'm doing. Anybody got one of those? <laughs> yeah, just simple thing. Like, I was walking through the kitchen one day, and my wife goes, where you going? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I was thinking about going upstairs. What, what, what are you going to do up there? I don't know. I'm not up there yet. <laughs> I was thinking about taking a shower. So you're going to take a shower now? I go, I don't know. I'm not upstairs. <laughs> and it doesn't seem like I'm going to progress any further than this. <laughs> I was doing that joke about a month ago at a, a country club, and there was a young, drunk woman down front, right? And she goes, you know, you could have you solved that whole problem if you just asked your wife to get in the shower with you. 
And I go, I think you missed the part where I said I've been married for 30 years. <laughs> if I ever asked my wife to get in the shower with me now, she'd go, why, something you can't reach anymore? <laughs> But my, she decided I should become a reader. I'll get into that in a bit. But my pandemic was, was uh, uh, it was good. I, uh, I skew younger than I am because I'm a little bit immature. Uh, but I actually got the shop during old people hours. Yeah, it's a good time, right? And you know what my takeaway is? Uh, I could beat the shit out of most other old people. <laughs> I don't want you to get me wrong. I'm not saying I'm going to Trader Joe's at the crack of dawn looking for a beef. <laughs> All I'm saying here is if there are two avocados left and it comes down to me and a retired librarian, I'm having guacamole that night. That's all I know. <laughs> you ever see old people at a grocery shopping? It's a trip. I watched an 85-year-old woman look at milk for 20 minutes. Picking up every fucking carton of milk like she'd never seen milk before. I go, lady, it's milk. You know what the ingredients is? Milk. I go, you don't got a lot of time left. You got to get that home. That's going to be, that's going to be cheese before you get it out of here. And uh, I, uh, I am, uh, I had to get tested. I'm going to, uh, away in a couple of days, and I had to get tested again. Has anyone been tested recently? Yeah, it's different. Now, where'd you go? CVS. CVS. It's all different. You just pull up to a drive-thru, and they throw a bunch of shit in your car. You stuff it on your face, throw it back at them, go buy some mouthwash, and go about your business. First time I went, way back when, I go, there's a person all gowned up, head to toe, welding equipment on. <laughs> hold it. Couldn't even tell if it was a man or a woman. Nor does it matter, by the way. I'm very woke. I know I don't look like one to be woke, but I'm extremely woke. I was happy not being woke, but my wife and children woke me, and now there's no putting the bear back. Still not the point of my story. I go, this person is all gowned up, welding, quit mask on, there's plexiglass between us, two rubber gloves coming out of holes, standing there with like a, she got like a pool cue with a toilet brush at the end of it. And she says, look, this is gonna be a little uncomfortable. I'm gonna stick this pretty far up your nose. <laughs> Probably farther than you've ever had anything up there. And I go, oh no. I lived through the 80s. You would be amazed at what's been up there. You're in danger of losing that brush. And I couldn't see him laugh, but the arms went like this, you know, and I... Uh, I go, ah, I got him. That's good. Yeah. And then and, and I, am, I just got my booster shot on Tuesday, which is why I'm a little nasal, I think. Uh, and uh, I'm fully vaccinated. I don't care if you are or not. I, again, I know where I am. If you're not, that's on you. Just stay the fuck away from me. <laughs> that's, that's all I ask. <laughs> but I, I come from that generation. I'm sure you have friends who won't get vaccinated be, for stupid reasons. Like I had a buddy come up to me, he goes, I'm not taking that vaccine. I don't know what the government put in it. I, they can't tell me what to put in my body. I go, dude, I've known you for 50 years. I know what you've put in your body. And this is where you draw the line? I go, I've helped you put shit in there. Your liver could be used as the cornerstone for the Museum of Bad Decisions. And now it's a temple? And then you all got a buddy who knows something, every, everything. I had another friend come up to me. He goes, you know, I was talking to our friend Eddie about the vaccine. And he said, I go, okay, let me stop you right there. Let's not listen to the greatest scientific minds of all time that have been working on this for 18 months. Let's listen to our friend Eddie. Guy who once drank his own urine to get a free shot at Applebee's. I'm pretty sure he's the one that's dialed in on this. I'm going with his wisdom. But we came out of the other end and it, you know, it all seems to be, remember there was a week in uh, May where they said we were fine? They came out in May and they went, ah, all over. Go out, go about your business. 
And then by the, that Friday, they went, ah, yeah, we were thinking about it, and maybe you should be, you know, go back in. And I didn't know what was coming back, you know, because I'm a very social person, and I didn't even know if you were supposed to shake hands anymore because that had gone away. And the first guy that week, he put out his mitt, and he could see it in my face. I didn't want to. You know, I, but I, I bowed to public pressure, and I, I shook his hand reluctantly, and I wish I hadn't. It was sort of wet and kind of clammy. Yeah, and moist, and it was just not good. And I, I just looked at him, and I went, ah, I just should have fisted you. <laughs> and then I immediately said, ah, I guess I could have worded that a little bit different. But we're sort of far down the rabbit hole. Let's just keep going, shall we? <laughs> but uh, I did uh, get to, uh, you know, uh, partake of some. I, right in the middle of pand the pandemic, I decided I wanted to become an astronaut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, they won't let me, I asked. Yeah. I, I made it pretty far, too, in the process. I actually got to talk to the FBI. Yeah, it turns out if you write 438 emails to NASA, the FBI will come and talk to you. <laughs> so if you're wondering how to get their attention, that's a surefire way. And then my wife decided, uh, I, and, and as I say, I was stuck with her for the whole, not stuck with her, we were together. Stuck. <laughs> 24 hours a day, no buffers. Yeah, stuck. Uh, I mean, we get along. We've been, as I say, we've been married for 30 years. Uh, happily, I am told. <laughs> and if I recall, I got married for one reason only. I was sick and tired of having my own thoughts. <laughs> yeah, well, sit here and watch television when there's a house to be painted. I must be insane. Well, thank God you came along, my love. Let me ask the guys this question. You ever get in a, a conversation with your wife and right in the middle of it you realize you're not talking to a friend of yours? <laughs> yeah, and there's no going back? I had this happen. It's nothing weird, right? I was talking to my wife and I dare say this is a conversation I could have with any man in this room and it would make complete sense. I don't care what you do for a living, where you live. None of that would matter. I go to my wife. I go, hey, honey, you know when you put your socks on in the morning? She goes, yeah, you put your socks on in the morning. She's already frustrated, haven't even started the conversation. And I say, you wear your socks all day, right? She goes, yes, you wear your socks all day. I say, maybe 8, 10, 12 hours. She goes, yes, you wear your socks all day. What's your point? I go, okay, so we agree. That is the proper measurement of sock wearing time, 8 to 12 hours. She goes, yeah, what are you getting at? I go, all right. I wore these socks last night for two and a half hours. Can I put them on again today and get the other nine and a half out of them? And she goes, what is wrong with you? And I said, unspecified. <laughs> and probably not a great time to have the underwear conversation, I'm guessing. I actually, I had a, actually had to go buy new underwear during the pandemic, anyone? I, uh, a lot of people gained weight. I actually lost weight during the pandemic. Yeah, did you? Yeah, I had a good, did you have to buy new underwear? I had to buy new everything. Yeah, I don't want to get personal. I had, uh, I, I just went out and bought new underwear because quite frankly, my underwear was feeling a little blousey. <laughs> and nobody wants that. No. Yeah, you'd be thinking you're all put together and everything, but on the inside, you'd be going, my underwear's a little blousey. <clears throat> so I went out, and I bought a nice six-pack of Hanes. Uh, first quality, not seconds. <laughs> Extra thick band, nice and stretchy. Look, I'm not bragging. I'm just trying to tell you folks, when I got the money, I throw it around. And I took my underwear home, right? And I tried them on, and they were doing everything in my life underwear should do. And then I took note of the fact that they had a button on the fly hole. You ever see that before? Yep. Have you? I had never seen it. I thought maybe by the time I usually got my underwear at seconds, uh, the button had fallen off, and that's why they were seconds. <laughs> I could see no real use for a button on men's underwear like that. When, when was the last time you didn't need to get the dick quickly?
The answer is never. You always have to. I think it was put there by a woman. Just to slow things up a little bit. <laughs> Go ahead, you fiddle with your button. If I'm still here when you're done, we'll see what happens. <laughs> all right, you guys seem like a nice crowd. I'm going to be the host all night long. Uh, so I'll bring up the other comics, and uh, it'll be fucking very self-explanatory. It, if it's not me, it'll be somebody else, and then... We'll go from there, all right? How about a nice round of applause for yourselves? Yeah. And, and as mentioned, as mentioned, we got a kick-ass show for you. These are all good friends of mine, so please give me your attention. I don't have to ask that because you're doing a good job already. But uh, uh, this first woman I'm going to bring to the stage, one of my dearest friends in the whole world. Uh, yeah, she's the queen of Boston comedy. She's sought after all over the place, and you're going to see why as soon as I shut up. You might know her from the Food Network or America's Got Talent. And she, she's just fucking amazing. You're going to love her. Please welcome Ms. Christine Hurley. Give her a nice round of applause. Thank you, my love. Tony V, ladies and gentlemen, let them know. Folks, my name is Christine Hurley. I'm from Plymouth, Massachusetts. I'm the mother of five children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Thank you. A little more from the back, please. A little more from the back. Thank you. Thank you. Take it in. Take it in. I want you folks to know this magic doesn't just happen after five kids. Oh, no, my friends. This is Slim Fast mixed with vodka. Every day, all day, right? First of all, it doesn't curdle. Who knew? <laughs> Second of all, all those condescending bitches at my kid's bus stop every morning can't even smell it on your breath. <laughs> Don't drink too much in the morning when you're trying to send five kids to school, folks. Shit goes bad pretty quickly. Case in point, a couple of weeks ago, my middle daughter, Ryan, woke up. I don't feel good, Mommy. I can't go to school. I said, go back to bed, Ryan. I'll call the school nurse. Let her know you're not coming in. Now, Ryan, she's like, um, oh, shit. Uh, let's say 12. <laughs> so I call the school nurse, and I leave a message on the machine. Hello, this is Mrs. Hurley. Ryan doesn't feel well. She won't be in today. Thank you very much. Ten minutes later, the phone rings. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Hurley? Yeah, this is Mrs. Hurley. Mrs. Hurley, it's Nurse Kane from the West School. What can I do for you, Nurse Kane? She said, I'm sorry, Ryan doesn't feel well. But she doesn't go here. I said, really? <gasps> Do you have any idea where she goes? <laughs> now, folks, the same long-suffering nurse who had to call me a few years earlier, similar situation. The time my youngest son, Brendan Hurley, had just turned five years old, and he was going to kindergarten. The baby was going to kindergarten. Very excited because he was a big boy. Big boy. You guys all know when the baby of the house does anything monumental, you got to pretend you're happy for that. Horse shit all goddamn day, right? All day. Morning to night. Hey, I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy. Big boy. Mommy, look at me. Mommy, look at me. Mommy, look at me. Look. Brendan Hurley, five years old. Five years old. Big boy now. Big boy. Go to school with the big kids. Big boy. Go to school. Big boy. I can do it myself, I can do everything myself, I can do everything myself because I'm a big boy and I'm five and I can do it. Do everything myself, mama. You know what, today I'm gonna make my own lunch. Go make my own lunch. Go make my own lunch for school because I'm five and I'm a big boy and I can do it. I'm gonna make my own lunch. I said, you are a fucking nag. <laughs> I said, you wanna make your own lunch, hot shot? Knock yourself out and I fired up a parliament and I went back to bed. Three hours later, the phone rings. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Hurley? Yeah, this is Mrs. Hurley. Mrs. Hurley, it's Nurse Kane from the West School. I'm like, oh, goody, this bitch. <laughs> what can I do for you, Nurse Kane? She says, you have to come to the school. You have to pick up Brendan in his lunchbox immediately. I said, why? She said, unfortunately, Brendan packed a leftover box of Kung Pao chicken and two wine coolers. <laughs> So my kids, uh, my boys, my two boys, I got girl, 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 boy, boy. Um, after my third boy, um, Jimmy Hurley was convinced that we would never have a son because his sperm was so strong, all he was going to do was blow the balls off all my eggs. 
that's just a little taste of life with married to Jimmy Hurley. Now, uh, my boys, used, uh, my two boys, played baseball. They played baseball, Little League, Little League. Anyone out here, your kids played town sports? Then, now, then, right, right. So you guys know, right? Town sports. So uh, Plymouth Little League, two words to describe Plymouth Little League, folks. Fucking nightmare, okay? <laughs> All right? It's not the kids, it's the adults that run the Little League that make it so horrible. Every town has these two or three guys, right? Your sports royalty, right? They've run your Little League for 30 years. They're going to run it for 30 more. they got the hats, the clipboards, championship jackets. Probably a couple of you Lexington cocksuckers out here right now. <laughs> so a couple years ago, uh, I just put the last kid on the bus. Phone rings, 9 o'clock in the morning. It's Jimmy. He's all excited. Christine! Christine! I just got a super secret email. Super secret email from Plymouth Youth Baseball. Super secret email. I can't believe I got the email, Christine. I found out they're having an elite, select, extreme, all-star, double-A, triple-A, AAU travel. Extreme, select, AAU, double, triple, star, all-star, double travel, AAU, select, travel. $4,200 for a fucking t-shirt baseball team. <laughs> He says, they're only picking 12 kids in the whole town. It's imperative you get down the baseball field. You get the kids on this team. I'm like, Jesus Christ. So I put my wine in a travel mug. <laughs> now, I white-knuckle it down to the, to the field. I get there. Oh, goody, ladies and gentlemen. Super secret email, not secret at all. Already lined up in front of me. We know them. We hate them. Every town has them. About 120 of the most pathetic, desperate Plymouth housewife baseball mothers. You love these broads? Do you love these broads? Do you? There's not enough Vicodin in the world, my friends. <laughs> for me to sit in the bleachers another spring with these self-absorbed douchebags and watch them try to outdo each other all goddamn day, right? They are a nightmare. Oh my God, hi. I'm sorry I'm late. I just got a new Range Rover and I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> sorry I'm late. I've been cooking gluten-free bakery since midnight. Sorry, I'm late. I couldn't find my other hunter boots. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, um, you know what? I just got a new job, a new job. Uh, one night a week. We don't need the money. Just one night a week. Uh, I work at the paper store. The paper store. Yeah, now all my dish towels say, live, laugh, love. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> like, oh, you fucking twats. And they're all... And they're all dolled up. They're all dolled up for baseball signups, these broads. Every single one of them. Pink baseball hats, Eastern Mountain Sports Fest, Lululemon yoga pants. Because they all get up at five and go to Zumba. Yeah, they go to Zumba. Yeah, oh, good for you. Good for you, yeah. I got up at five, too, my friends. Because Jimmy Hurley left me on the lawn. <laughs> and the sprinklers went off. You know who else these broads are? You pull up to their souped-up minivans. What's plastered all across that rear windshield? What is it? The stick people, the little kids, the stick people, the stick people, the stick people. <sighs> Folks, if you're parked outside this evening <laughs> and your vehicle's rocking a little stick people family, well, you better leave before me. Because <laughs> I'm going to fucking ram you. Or how about our child is an honor, stu honor student of the month? You love that one, the bumper sticker? Our child is an honor student of the month. Good for you. Good for you. My 22-year-old daughter and her 47-year-old boyfriend <laughs> live in my basement. <laughs> and they use an easy-bake oven to dry their weed. Yeah, where's my bumper sticker? <laughs> so I'm in line, line's not moving. You know, I got shit to do. Line's not moving. I'm wearing my own uniform that day, folks. I had on a pair of sweatpants that said Foxwood Casino down the left leg. <laughs> One of Jimmy's old t-shirts on said Budweiser. Swing with the king. And at one point I realized my sunglasses were missing a lens. <laughs> but it's for the kids, you know? So I look at the front of the line. I see the sports royalty, the three guys that run everything in Plymouth baseball. I recognize one of the guys right away, Bill Nolan. Bill Nolan. Big hot shot in Plymouth baseball. Always has been, always will be. I said, I know Bill Nolan. He kind of knows me. I'm getting this done. I got shit to do. I cut all these broads in line. I'm this far away from Bill Nolan. He is not happy. 
He goes, Mrs. Hurley. I said, Nolan. Who do I have to fuck to get my kid on this baseball team? I said, I got shit to do, who? He goes, ugh. Don't talk to me, Mrs. Hurley. Why don't you talk to Chris Parker? I said, Parker? Mm-mm. No, I fucked him twice for football. No. <laughs> Not doing it. Imagine how upset I was last week when Jimmy called and said, my girls want to do field hockey. Folks, you are delightful. Thank you so much for having me tonight. I'm going to leave you with a quick little disclosure. Please do not worry about my long-suffering husband, Jimmy Hurley. I do 10 to 15 comedy shows a week, my friends. When I get home at night, Jimmy Hurley cries on a big bag of fucking money. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I am available for kids' parties. You want to chat afterwards, it would be great. And I'm going to bring you back to your host, the fabulous Mr. Tony V. Thank you, guys. Nice job, Doc. Love you. Thank you. Christine Hurley, ladies and gentlemen. Give a nice round of applause, Christine Hurley. You know, I'm going to make this prediction. If that woman learns to come out of her shell... She's going to have something going for herself. She really is. Are you having a good time so far? Yeah. yeah. Is, you know, think of it this way. Right now, there are people driving by here. They don't know this is going on up here. <laughs> they don't think there's anything going on up here. They go, what's going on in there? Nothing. And it's fucking raucous. It's great. I, uh, my wife, uh, back to her, uh, she, uh, during the pandemic, decided I, be I should become a reader. Anybody read? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I can read. Like, I can shampoo my hair and not drink bleach and shit like that. It's just not what I do for fun, you know? So my wife decided uh, I should read because I would be a more well-rounded human. And uh, she goes, maybe you should read the classics like that you were supposed to read in high school and you get you know, you'd get a newfound love of reading. She goes, why don't you try reading Moby Dick? And I go, you mean the white whale where the guy gets stuck to the side and then dies at the end? She goes, yeah. I go, why the fuck would I read that? I already know what happens. <laughs> and I read, has anyone ever read Moby Dick? Yeah, yeah it's fucking awful. <laughs> Maybe in 1860 it <laughs> but but not now. I, eight pages, the guy walks out of one building and into another. I, I don't got that kind of time. I'm busy. I got poker to play on my phone. I got the airhead to trim. I can't be doing this shit. But it rekindled my love of whales. I have a love of whales because, I don't know if anybody saw this, about nine months ago, there was a woman who got swallowed by a whale. Did anyone see this on YouTube? Yeah, it's, it is a, I'll set the scene for you because we got time. Uh, there's a couple, I don't know if there were couples, two people in separate kayaks, kayaking. Universal sign for kayaking, by the way. <laughs> you can go to any country and just go, hey! And they'll go, kayak? Yeah, go, yeah. So they're out kayaking, right? And the woman looking one, uh, I told you I was going to try all night. I, I, I don't know how she identifies. But I'm just saying, if there was a lineup and they said, pick out the woman-looking one, I'd go that one. <laughs> anyway, they're kayaking. A whale breaches, right? And I don't know how the whale identifies either. It's a mammal that gets to pick. Anyway, takes the woman-looking one in, kayak and all. Right? She goes into the whale. I don't, now, they call it a whale swallowing. I don't know how far she got in. You know, I don't know if she got, like, Jonah level or Pinocchio level, which are really the only two levels of whale swallowing that I know. 
Now I guess we have to add a third kayak woman looking person level. Anyway, the whale decides, I don't like this. Swishes her around, this isn't dinner, it's not krill, I hate this, spits her out. Whole, kayak and all. She continues to kayak like nothing happened. <laughs> like it was a speed bump in her day. Comes shooting out of the whale and just keeps going. Like, I don't know, it could have been her first day kayaking and she thought this was part of it. You know, like a friend of hers is going to go, hey, I'm going kayaking on Sunday, and she'll go, oh, you're going to love the part where you get swallowed by a whale. <laughs> Still not the point of my story. All right? I looked, 497,000 people viewed this. 67,000 people gave it a thumbs down. Like they had seen better whale swallowings. <laughs> and could somehow comment on it. Like, they looked at this miracle and went, nah. Eh, now, if she could have put an egg in the blowhole of that whale or something, maybe. And that's not even the end of my whale stories. I didn't know there was gonna be a rash of whale swallowings when I started this, but over the summer, there was a guy in P-Town. Did anyone remember this? Guy's diving for lobsters off of P-Town, and he gets swallowed by a whale. Guy's name's Mike Packard, real guy. He's down diving for lobsters, and uh, a whale, he goes into a whale's mouth, right? Now, my first point is this. Way fucking easier way to get lobsters. You buy them in any supermarket for like eight bucks a pound. Plus, I don't know how focused you got to be on grabbing lobsters from the bottom of the ocean to have something about the size of a school bus sneak up on you. But you gotta be way into it. <laughs> and it turns out this guy's story is fascinating. He has been swallowed by a whale, struck by lightning twice, survived a plane crash that three other people died in, and walked out of the rainforest after four days unharmed with no provisions. Whoa. Yeah, my first point to you is this. If you ever meet this guy, stay the fuck away from him. <laughs> Because I don't know how your day's going to end. <laughs> but he's going to be just fine. <laughs> right, that's the end of my whale swallowing stories for the evening. Yes. I did that just for you, Ed. <clears throat> this next gentleman I'm going to bring to the stage has been a friend of mine longer than we both care to remember. <laughs> he's uh, one of the funniest guys working today. He's always there when you need him. Uh, our, our personal conversations would put us in jail most days. Uh, and you're going to see his humor as soon as I stop. Would you please welcome with me Mr. Brad Mastrangelo. Give him a nice round of applause. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much for having me and giving me lung cancer at the same time. <laughs> Holy shit. I walked in here and I said, this is really good. I, I, I don't smoke. I love the smell of smoke from across the street. <laughs> but this is a very nice place, and thanks for having me. And, and, and there was four accents on the way up to New Hampshire, and it took me three and a half hours, and, and you people really got to take a lesson because <laughs> they should have been dead. That's what I said. For me to wait in this car this long, you should die. <laughs> Does that mean? I don't know. Is that really bad? No. No, but this is, uh, and we're getting back into it. That's the main thing. And I got my booster shot, and I sat in a booster chair to get the booster shot. I got the J&J &J shot. It was, oh, that's the worst one. I said, no, it's, it's, it's fine. Look, so I piss out of my ear. Who cares? <laughs> I really do. I piss out of my ear like that, and I shit out of my ankle. But that's another day. <laughs> so I tell you, I, I, I just, I married, just had a 27th wedding anniversary and it's interesting because now um, things change, you know, when you get married. At 27 years, it's like, remember we first get married, you wake, I wake her up at 2 in the morning, you, oof, you go like crazy. You know what I'm talking about? But now after 27 years, if I wake her up at 2 in the morning, the fucking house better be on fire. <laughs> yeah. I tried it last week. She goes, I don't smell smoke, asshole. I don't. But, but then we, we went to hell, but we went to marriage counseling just to see what it was like. And the marriage counselor said to me, she goes, you know, what I tell my clients is, at this point, you should make an appointment for sex. 
So the next day I said, honey, I'd like to make an appointment for sex. And she said, I'm booked. <laughs> so then I said, well, well, maybe is there someone else in the office that can see me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't get laid that night. No, I didn't. Yeah. It's different now, though. Now, now it's, sex to us now is we lie in bed, we look at each other, and we think about sex. That's sex. But, and I still finish first. <laughs> I do. She'll say, you're done, aren't you? You selfish son of a bitch. I, what makes you think I'm done? Because you're making a sandwich, you big bastard. <laughs> and that's what guys want after a sandwich, right? You ladies want to cuddle. We just want a ham and cheese. It's very, that's why I said, that, let's have sex in the kitchen. We're all happy. So, but things are getting bad. I'm going out. I do a lot of cruise ships, and I'm um, going back out on my first one. Well, it's not a cruise ship. It's a, it's a dinghy in Revere Beach, but you got to start somewhere. <laughs> I do a lot of cruise ships. Great people watching on cruise ships. Oh, my God. It's like they say, you know, I'll never see these people again. Fuck it, I'll wear this. <laughs> some of the outfits. And there's some, there's some big people on cruise ships. Oh, if my ship sinks, it's not mechanical. It's the friggin' people on the ship. <laughs> And they wear, I'll tell you the story, and, and, and women and men, but I'm going to offend both of them, so I don't want the ladies to get mad at me. We're, at, we're on a ship, and my wife's with me, and this woman comes out to the, to the pool, big girl, uh, which is fine, 280, 310, big girl, wearing a thong bikini. Oh, yes, let's suck that in for just a second, boys. Yeah, yeah. Although she had on high heels, which made it sexy. <laughs> And I said to my wife, I go, you know, I don't want to be an asshole, but I'm just saying, if, if your stomach causes an ankle rash, maybe the one piece is the way to go. <laughs> and, the, and, and the guys are no better with the Speedos, right? Ladies, do you think a guy is attractive in a Speedo vase? Thank you. I've never met one yet. It makes whatever you have look even smaller, if you want to know the truth. It's true. You don't see black guys wearing Speedos. No, you don't. If they did, it would say, Speedo. <laughs> <laughs> I love Salem, New Hampshire. It's a destination spot. It really is. <laughs> People come from out of town. Where should we go? Well, I think if there's this little place called Salem, and uh, they don't got the horse track anymore, do they? I remember I went there years ago. Rockingham Park, right? True story. I bet a horse. Chuck, I swear to God, this is a true story. Horse is winning. Makes the final turn. Collapses. Dies. Right on the track. Yeah. It's not funny yet, I know. But uh, so, the, so the horse fucking dies right at the track. So I go up to the, to the ticket guy. He goes, this is a loser. I go, no, no, the horse died. He goes, well, how do you think the owner feels? I says, I says but I got to get my money back. The horse died. He says, I don't give a fuck, kid. Get away from me. He says, I says, well, can I get a free bet for the next race? He goes, well, y'all luck, that horse will die too. <laughs> oh, God. So I got, uh, I'm getting older now. I can tell I'm getting older now. I'm starting to pay attention to Viagra commercials. It's scaring the shit out of me. Before they come on, I'm like, change that shit. Now they come on, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's see what they have to say. <laughs> I think we all got it, right? There are every other commercials for uh, erectile dysfunction. It's every, I think I may have it. And I don't even, no, I do have it. I definitely do have it. Actually, I don't have it, but I have this other disease. I just got diagnosed with it. It's called Peronis. Anyone ever hear of it? Ladies, it's okay. You can, you, what it is, let me describe it, is your, your thing there, I'll call it your thing there, I want to be nice, it, it kind of bends a little. Yeah, 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 true story. I woke up and my, my thing is like, like bent. If I want to have sex with my wife, she's got to be around the corner. That's how this is now. <laughs> it's the freakiest thing. So I go to the doctor, you know, and I says, I think there's a problem. I says, uh, I got a knuckle in my dick. It's like this. It's like... <laughs> so uh, he says, oh, we're going to, this, this is all true. He says, he goes, all right, we're going we're gonna to hook you up to electrodes. We're, we're going to shock it. I go, <laughs> God is my judge. The guy comes in, and he got, like, electrodes. And he, he goes, all right, when you feel the electricity, raise your hand. Now he says, he's setting it up. I'm going. <laughs> so now um, he says, and now the doctor comes in. He's okay. He says, now what I'm going to do. Gonna, we're gonna, I'm going to give you a needle. To, I go, whoa, 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 whoa. He goes, no, no, the needle's going to give you an erection. I go, no, I can guarantee it's not. <laughs> that is the last thing that's going to happen if you give me a needle. I'll tell you, I'll have a vagina after that, okay? <sighs> so now, son of a bitch gives me a needle in my dick. And um, it wasn't bad. 
But now, then here's the best part. He says to me after, he says, now, um, I want you to go in this room, and I want you to uh, fondle yourself to get an erection. I go, what the hell was the needle for? <laughs> now you just want to embarrass the shit out of me? So now I'm in there, and, and, and I'm not fond. Well, yeah, I'm jerking. I am. And um, <laughs> now this old woman comes in to take an ultrasound with me. And, and, and I told her, you know, I'm almost done. And um, <laughs> now she, she, God saw the truth. She puts cream on my, and I go, that's all I needed. <laughs> I didn't need the needle. I tell you, I'm like Pavlov's dog. I see hand cream, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and then she's giving me an ultrasound. She's going up and, and she goes, the guy's like, oh, Brad, you got good blood flow. Well, that runs in my family. <laughs> then he says to me, he goes, well, you know, you got this. He goes, we can, we can fix it. Uh, it's not bad, though. He says, well, three, three different procedures, um, 6,000 each. So, so 18,000 to straighten out the ship. You know what I mean? I says, um, I think I'm good. <laughs> you know, I kind of like it, actually. I kind of like it. My underwear fits better. I think I'm good with this. I really am. So I'm just saying there's things out there that you don't know about that is, it's, it's out there, you know? Like, I was talking about my wife, she's, she's a retired parole officer, so she, she has a gun. And uh, when your wife has a gun, it's a whole new ball game. And, oh, yes, it is. I, I can go, honey, I'm home. Want to have sex? She goes, no. I said, neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure we're on the same page, sweetie. And then she's got handcuffs. So one night, I, uh, I said, why don't we, you know, why don't you put the handcuffs on? We'll spark it up. She goes, oh, you want me to handcuff me? Said, yeah. So she handcuffed me, and, and she beat the shit out of me. <laughs> So be careful what you wish for, you know what I mean? A, but this is fun, because I, I was born in Chelsea, Massachusetts, and um, I know, I don't look Spanish, but that's where I was born. <laughs> no, we had to move, because we didn't speak Spanish. And um, No, Chelsea's on, it's on the way back. Uh, no, it's not, it's not, it's, a, it's like Lowell. Lowell's a beautiful city, if you're really on crack and shit-faced. <laughs> I used to, and I'll leave you with this one story. And this is, I used to work at the Bill Ricker House of Correction. I was a, when I was in college, I was a guard, and uh, this really happened. All right, a little risque, but I think, well, who cares? We're at a cigar shop in Salem. Um, so I was like 19, and they, and after your visits, they had visits. They had to go into a room. They would check you for drugs, and um, you know stuff like that. So the guards play a joke on me. They put me in this room. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. That this really happened. All of a sudden, the door opens. Six foot five, 300 pound black guy walks in. I have no clue. He shuts the door. Now he starts taking his clothes off. I'm going, I'm going to have sex with a black guy, I guess. <laughs> so I'm scared to death, right? Now he's totally naked, totally naked. And he looks at me, he goes, well, I go, you look good. <laughs> he says, he says, uh, he says, well, you're going you're gonna to check me? I, says, I, I just, just said, you look good, yeah. So he says, now he turns around. Okay, and he bends over. And I'm going, oh God. He wants me to go first. <laughs> <sighs> and I don't want to, I don't want to go first. <laughs> and then he even gets worse, he, he spreads his butt. And I'm, it looked like the Callahan Tunnel, I swear to God. <sighs> he says, we gotta check me for drugs. And I go, sir, I gotta be honest with you, if you somehow got drugs and were able to stick them in your ass, and you're gonna go back to your cell, take them out of your ass and smoke them? You deserve to be high as a kite. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me tonight, gang. This is a really nice time, really nice. Thanks, guys. Back to Tony V. Nice job, Thank you, my friend. Nice job, nice that, keep that going for Brad Mastrangelo, please. Yes. Yes. I'm telling you, you didn't expect it to be this good, did you? Nah, you just said, ah, we'll go, we'll eat, and we'll smoke, and it'll be great. But this is like some top-notch, ta I mean, not me, of course, but everybody else knows what they're doing, you know? And I, didn't, I don't know if we mentioned this, this belt is going home with one of us. That's why we do it for a, about $30 worth of fucking plastic. <laughs> that's, that's how cheap we are, right? I go, what's in it for us? A belt that you can't wear. <laughs> but I promise you this, if, you, if I win, 
I'm gonna wear just the belt. <laughs> and not even strategically placed. I'm gonna wear it like a sash on New Year's Eve. That's what I'm gonna do. And it's hard for me to admit that because uh, I, I am aging. Anyone having trouble aging? Does anyone creak when they stand up? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Anyone got the thing now when you start to sit down and the last four inches is free fall? Yeah, that is not a red letter day in a human's life. When, when you can't control your rate of sitting, you got troubles. Because you know what's coming next. You ever see the folks who need a little bit of momentum to get up? You can see them ticking it off in their heads. That's it, I'm going on three, no matter what. <laughs> and they get up like a triumphant gymnast. Ta-da! <laughs> All aging has done for me is it's added one more thing that I can forget uh, leaving the house. Now I have to go wallet, sunglasses, keys, phone, teeth. <laughs> That's the only difference. And I come from good stock, I'll live a long time. My dad lived to be 97. Yeah, he had a nice long run. He was a funny guy, too. On his 90th birthday, I said to him, I go, hey, Dad, what do you want for your birthday? He goes, ah, get something you like. You're going to have it pretty soon. <laughs> so I just said kayak. <laughs> I was under pressure. Uh, and he lived so long, he had what you call a pacemaker, you know, to keep the ticker going. And I don't know anything about him, because you'll find this part hard to believe. I am not a doctor. Honest, but they would tune them up and I went to one of the meetings with them and I was talking to the technician and I said, well, that's electricity in there, right? She goes, yeah, it runs on battery, the pacemaker. I said, well, that makes a lot of sense. We haven't been plugging them into anything. You know, no, we can't go to dinner. Dad's not fully charged. <laughs> so I, I just said, out of curiosity, how long does that battery last? You know, I'm waiting on a kayak. And she says, oh, the battery lasts a minimum of 10 years. And we usually get 15 or more out of them. And I said, well, that's amazing. Have you told the cell phone people about this? Because <laughs> I can't get but four or five hours out of mine. Nice part of that story is at the end, I hooked up my phone to my dad. And uh, we became very close. <laughs> and he got great reception. All right, our final comedian for the evening. Uh, and I, I have to say this. Joe, do you want to poke your head out here before I... Uh, yeah, in case you have to go. This is Joe Yanetti. He's not on tonight, but he is last year's winner. So... Wait. Wait. It comes... I didn't know it came with a case. I would have tried harder. Oh. You're never going to win. No, I know. It's all right. You're too, you're too filthy. <laughs> that, that Christine girl, she's nice and clean. She's clean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Joe. That's Joe Yanetti. And our final performer for the evening is uh, another good friend of ours. Uh, you're really going to enjoy him. He, uh, when I asked him to do this, he goes, well, I don't really smoke cigars, but sure, I'll come. He just got off a ship where he does a lot of uh, cruises and stuff. He headlines all over the world. He did a show from us. He was down in, where were you, in, in uh, the Dominican Republic or something? Somewhere, you know, some island <laughs> that had Wi-Fi. And he did a show for us. But he's really funny, and you're going to enjoy him. Please welcome Mr. Orlando Baxter. Give him a nice round of applause. Hey, Orlando. Another round for Tony. How you guys doing? You good? This, this, is, this is uncomfortable. I uh, knew when I came to New Hampshire it was going to be white, but this is, this, is, this is a lot whiter than I expected, to be honest with you. But you guys look a lot. You know, I've been on a cruise ship, so I've seen... White people before, but uh, <laughs> you guys look a lot better because you're not wearing swimsuits, so I appreciate it. 
I, uh, la no, the last time I was in New Hampshire, I was at Hampton Beach. I, I had something weird uh, happen to me. I didn't know there were a lot of people that didn't realize that uh, black people also wear sunblock. You know, we wear, it's not a fucking joke, lady. We wear, <laughs> you know, if the people didn't know that, I, I stop at a fucking CVS. I walk in, the, I'm, I ask the lady at the car, I say, hey, ma'am, can you point me in the hour to sunblocks at? She looks at me and says, for what? <laughs> I thought she was fucking with me, so I was like, because I got a white girl tied up in my trunk, which is... I mean, I mean, it's rude. It is rude, but why should I be the only one uncomfortable, right? So now that... Then she goes, oh my God, I didn't, I didn't mean it like that. I wasn't trying to be rude or offensive. Please forgive me, and I, you know, whatever. But I, I did think it was weird because if she, you know, if I did have a white girl tied up in a trunk, she didn't give a fuck, which was <laughs> strange. And then she said, you know, I had no idea black people use sunblock. And at, at this point in the conversation, I probably should have walked away, but I was curious. I was like, what do you think we use? She said, no, 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 I don't want to say. I said, come on, tell me. I ain't going to tell anybody I was lying. And she goes, <laughs> she goes, well, I just thought you guys had the ability. I said, ability? Wow. Ability like a superhero or something? She goes, no, I thought you guys had the ability to absorb the sun. I said, what? <laughs> I've never heard that shit before in my life, but I couldn't get mad at her because I asked a question. I just looked at her and said, lady, I don't know where you get your information from, but just because we're docking in you doesn't mean our skin's made out of solar panels. You know what I mean? <laughs> you think black people go to the beach all day to charge up and shit, just be laying out there? <laughs> Come on, son, give it to me so I can run faster. So... It's very weird, man. Uh, I, was, I was a teacher for a long time. Any teachers in the house? Any teachers in the house? No? Good. Fuck teachers, right? <laughs> it's a real rough job. I taught for like 12 years. I used to break up fights all the time. But the funny thing about teaching is they don't train you on how to break up fights and shit at, at all. You know what I mean? I remember this, uh, teachers at my school used to get hurt all the time trying to break them up. And I remember this lady dislocated her shoulder. So during the teacher's meeting, I asked the principal, how come we don't get any training on breaking up fights? And you know what the principal said? He said, come on, man. You teach us. Use your instinct. I, I thought that was weird. Because what if your instinct tells you to put uh, $5 down on the big girl, right? And <laughs> <laughs> now he's in your face. I can't believe you only put $5 on that girl. You know she's undefeated. Come on now. So it, was, so it was weird, man. So I, I would break up fights. The worst fight I ever broke up, I uh, swear to God, uh, girl fight. Girl, girls are the most vicious fights. Because there's no rules when they fight at all, right? So one day they had me downstairs helping out Bob. Bob's like a, like a, a teacher that's about to retire. When a teacher's about to retire, I don't give a fuck about nothing except how many days left of school. You know, I got 74 days left, right? Don't give a fuck. Bob didn't give a fuck. I know he didn't because he was a gym teacher. He used to wear his jogging pants on backwards. The string used to hang down the, the back way right here. So they had me helping out Bob because Bob was doing the scoliosis check. Remember that test? The most perverted test you ever took in your life. You got to bend over, grab your ankles like you're in prison, right? And the gym teacher's, gym teacher's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, Show me that vertebrae one more time, right? No idea why the gym teacher does the scoliosis check. This dude got a PhD in kickball, right? <laughs> so I'm helping out Bob because Bob doesn't give a fuck and he's doing this test and I'm just there and I'm watching. I'm an in-school suspension teacher at the time and I'm just watching him do this test. And uh, these two girls, they don't like this one girl. And you know how girls, when they get together with their friends, they don't like a girl. They're fucking mean and shit, right? So the girl is bent over. She's like, Ugh, look at her all bent over. Bitch, your back looks like a question mark, right? The girl, I don't even know what that means, but she was offended, right? So the girl didn't do anything. She didn't react. Then her friend goes, ugh, something stinks in here. The girl that was bent over, she fucking got up, kicked one of the girls in the chest. Next thing I know is a fight. I run over to break up the fight. Here's the problem. When I go to grab one of the girls, one of the girls pulled the girl's shirt. One of the girl's boobs popped out, right? And, you know, I, I never had no training on no... Goddamn booby popping out, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I've been at teacher's orientation and the principal was like, just in case a titty pops out. <laughs> Pull the fire alarm, get the fuck out the building, right? <laughs> so I thought she was gonna call like a titty time out and put it back in. No! <laughs> she kept fighting with the titty out and the titty was going everywhere. It was like a nunchuck at one point, hitting a, <laughs> hit in the face. 
Fucking Bob, he starts blowing the whistle at it. Like, why, why are you blowing the whistle? It's a fight. It's not, it's not a football game. Offsides on the, first, on the big titty first down, right? So I, I, I run out the room to go get a female teacher because that's what I thought you were supposed to do. When I came back, the fight was, the fight was over, right? And I, <laughs> I got in trouble. I got in trouble for leaving Bob. It was like, why you leave Bob in my head? I was like, man, fuck Bob, right? <laughs> Bob's got 74 days left of school, right? Who gives a fuck? And kids got camera phones, and that's what I was afraid of. Like, I don't care what kind of teacher you are. No teacher wants to get called to the principal's office because there's a picture of them on Facebook with the big titty look on their faces just standing there. <laughs> Now you got to lie. But I thought, you know, it, you know, thank God it didn't happen. But I thought about it. I was like, who, who does that? You know what I mean? Only, only people I know who fight with the titty. Women do that. Dude, dudes don't do that. Me and you get in a fight, sir. One of your balls pops out. Guess what? Fight's fucking over, dog, right? It's, it's over. <laughs> yeah, that, that scrotum's like a big white flag does. You win some, you lose some. But you live to see another day, right? So it was just weird. It was weird teaching, man. I was, you know, in school suspension teacher. It was, it was funny. Like, my favorite kids used to be, like, the ESL kids. English is the second language. Because sometimes they get in trouble for miscommunication. You know what I mean? Like, one time I had a Dominican kid get in trouble because he accidentally broke a window in class. Accidentally. So I said, Jose, how you, how you accidentally break a window in class? He said, it's not my fault. It's not my fault, the t-shirt. He calls his teacher a t-shirt, by the way, right? <laughs> he said, the t-shirt, the t-shirt said to me to crack the window. I said, wait, what? He said, yes, the teacher told me to crack the window. And I say, are you sure you want me to crack the window? She said, yes, I, I cracked the window. It's not my fault, papi, right? And as a teacher, you're not supposed to laugh. <laughs> laugh my fucking ass off. You ever laugh so hard you fart a little bit, right? It's just it's uncomfortable. He said, it's not my fault, mister. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Then I started feeling bad for the kid. Not because he broke the window. Not because I farted in his face. I felt bad because I was like, damn, what if he doesn't change? That'd be weird if he didn't change. Could you imagine him like 10 years later? He's at the police station. And the cop's like, Jose, why'd you shoot that Chinese man? He's like, it's not my fault. The boss... The boss said to me, do you want a cappuccino? And I, I said, <laughs> got to let this shit marinate for a little bit, sir, right? <laughs> so it's weird, man. Did the teaching thing. I, uh, I recently uh, you know, turned 40. I'm in the 40s and shit. I can... I can tell some of you guys are a lot older than that, right? You guys are older than 40, some of you guys in your 40. No? All right, fuck it. <laughs> I know you guys are. But it's, uh, it's weird, man. It's a weird, weird fucking age. I, I, I had, the, I had this, the, the, the exam done, you know, the fucking. <laughs> I see a lot of asses clenching up right now. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had this don't, but, you know, the, the prostate exam, I had this done, but I didn't mean to have it done. You ever, like, not know you're going to get it? Like, I, I, I was straight up, I was at a physical, I did the physical, everything. So I don't really trust doctors anyway. Uh, and the dude at the end of the physical, he said something that fucked me up. He was like, uh, you black, right? I was like, wait, what I got? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, what are you talking about? He starts talking about, hey, you know, in the black African-American community, prostate cancer is a big deal. You should think about getting this exam. I see you have an uncle that passed away from uh, prostate cancer. I said, yeah, 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 you know, I get, I get the game, I get it, you know, no problem, I get it. Now, when I said I get it, I wasn't, I wasn't talking about that day, you know what I mean? I thought you had like a couple of weeks to go home and talk to your ass about it, like, hey, ass, you better start doing push-ups, right? Then the guy's like, all right, I'll be right back, I'll go get, I gotta go get gloves, so he fucking leaves, which I thought was weird because it's 11 o'clock in the morning, like, I don't know how many asses he's been doing by 11 in the morning, that's a lot of asses, you know what I mean, to run out of gloves. So I'm just sitting there, I'm nervous as shit. I'm sitting there. I'm like, holy shit, I'm about to get this fucking exam. And uh, I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm sweating. And I'm saying to myself, why the fuck am I sweating so much? It's just, it's just, you know, it's a finger. It's not a thumb. You know what I mean? It's different, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, a finger is fine. Like, you, someone fucking putting a thumb up there. That's a fucking problem, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, you know, I'm sitting there, and then I'm like, damn, why am I, so I shouldn't be this nervous over this fucking exam. It's just an exam. And I started thinking, I was like, oh, I know why I'm nervous. 
because dudes don't talk about it. We don't talk about it amongst each other. Nobody's on Facebook. Just got my ass busted today. <laughs> Hashtag hamburger help a hand, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what I was fucking saying, right? So then the, the dude comes back in. I didn't like this shit. Yeah, yeah, I got the gloves. He's smiling. First of all, you shouldn't be smiling during an exam like that. It's fucking unprofessional. So I'm, I'm there, and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there, and it, you know, he said, hey, you got to lay down, and I'm fucking laying down, and you're laying in this fetal position. And he did something real, like, that fucked me up a little bit, because he had one of these, those chairs with the wheels on the bottom. And this, this motherfucker, he scooted over to me like this, all, like, just <laughs> smile on his face. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. Sometimes when you're a comedian, sometimes everybody wants to be funny because they're trying to make you laugh. But it's like, don't try to make me laugh in this fucking situation, right? <laughs> So he puts the gloves on and he says, <laughs> he asked me the dumbest question in the world because I'm laying, I'm looking at him. He's like, hey, uh, this is what he asked. You want more, you want more ointment than this? I'm like, dude, I'm a, I'm a first timer. I want that shit dripping off your elbow to be quite honest with you. Right? I want you doing this shit. God damn, this is a lot of ointment. You ain't gonna feel nothing, right? And then, and then he puts his hand on my shoulder, which, you know, and I'm fucking new to this. I don't know what's going on. He puts his hand on my shoulder, one hand. Now, I thought that was for, like, le you know, this is what I realized. It's for leverage, right? For them to get in there. <laughs> I thought when he put his hand on my shoulder, because I was so nervous, he was going to squeeze something in my shoulder, and my ass cheek would just relax and shit, just sh shut down. <laughs> <laughs> nope. He goes, what's your date of birth? I was like, oh, I was born at eight. And then he just... Hit me. You ever been with your loved one, you hit the wrong hole, and she's like, hurt, that, that shit don't hurt, right? In your mind, that, yo, that shit hurt, man. <laughs> My ankles clicked together, I twisted, and it scared the shit out. This dude pulled his hand out too quick. I don't know if the fucking glove was too big. The glove got caught in my ass. <laughs> Just hanging there like a flag out the window. I didn't know what to do. But listen, guys, listen, that's been all my time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you. That was Orlando Baxter. Give him a nice round of applause. All right. Uh, Dave, I think somebody needs an extra ticket. Did you collect them already? You got you all set, Chuck? All right, so now what? All right, you're going to take it? All right. I was going to have Joe do a few minutes while you tally the votes. Or do you already have them? Joe, Joe, come on up. Did you? All right. Do you have to count? Yeah, this is, a, this is an add on. Yeah. Hi. That was a great round of applause in my introduction. Thank you very much. They won't let me say I'm reigning champion because they wouldn't let me compete because I'm funnier than all these motherfuckers. So. How we doing? How many people have spent less than a half hour at a Dunkin' Donuts drive through lately? No, <laughs> less than a half hour. Holy shit. Yeah, what would you like? I'm the only one here. We have coffee. Anything else, you're a dick. So, isn't it... Where are we? We're in New Hampshire, right? You guys like New Hampshire? Yeah. I don't, how many people were at the last time we did this? All right, do you remember what jokes I did? Because I don't. So, I'm from East Boston. Yeah. yeah. Wow, you guys just don't, you're like, he's a fucking champion, prove it. I, you, you, this, this sucks. All right, so, let's see. I'm the proudest Bostonian you'll ever meet in your life, unless I'm at Logan Airport. Has anyone been to Logan Airport lately? Yep. Yeah, 5.20 a.m., first flight out, little chick at the Delta counter. If you carry on, don't fit in that hole, go fuck your sister. <laughs> wow, good morning. How can you be this angry? No planes have left yet. You go to Manchester, New Hampshire airport, anyone fly out of Manchester? Yeah, you go through twice, they know you forever. That's Joe. Go ahead. You don't have to empty your pockets, you crazy bastard. Just go. Fucking Joe. I was going through one time a couple of weeks ago. 
not really. It was like two years ago, but I haven't flown in a while. But uh, I, I got a brand new passport. I give it to the lady. She got this eyepiece. She's looking at my passport. I'm thinking the new passports must have some newfangled code inside them. You need that special eyepiece to see it. I go, what does that thing do? She goes, so I can see. They got a blind lady checking IDs at the airport in Manchester. I got nothing against blind people. This isn't the job she should have. She's rubbing my face then feeling the page. You put on some weight, Joe. <laughs> So, I met Dave in East Boston. Anyone here from East Boston? No? Bunch of rich fucks? Okay. Where, where'd you grow up? Lynn. Lynn. Okay, you're not all rich. <laughs> Holy shit. Remember they wanted to change the name of Lynn to, what was it, Ocean View? No, Ocean State or something. Not Ocean State. That's a fucking motor oil. Ocean State? Quaker State. Uh, what the fuck? It's the same shit. See? Fucking Lynn. It never grow out of it. What, where do you live now? Northampton. Northampton? I'll bet if I called anyone in Northampton, went, where's the guy from Lynn live? They all know your fucking house. Yeah. And no one will park in front of it. <laughs> He'll steal your fucking tires. I was in the North End one time. The guy goes, you need new tires. I go, yeah, where do I go? He goes, you like the tires on that Lincoln right there? <laughs> See, what the fuck? I go, no, I need an air conditioner. He goes down the street. He goes, how about that one? <laughs> one time, this is a true story. Uh, there, there's this guy who used to hang out with all the Boston comics named Iggy Salvo. He was a bookmaker in East Boston. Iggy got arrested once. He was the funniest person I knew. The judge said, Iggy, I want you to, they had his phone tapped and they caught him. And he goes, Iggy, I want you to surrender, the judge, I want you to surrender yourself at noon on Wednesday. He goes, what? He says, I want you to surrender at noon on Wednesday. He goes, what am I, a fucking Indian? <laughs> you guys are fucking slow. So, <laughs> so Iggy's wearing this horrendous looking shirt. And as a joke, I go, Iggy, that's a beautiful shirt. Where can I get one of those? And he goes, hold on. And he calls the fucking guy. I go, Iggy, I don't want one of those fucking ugly shirts. He goes, hey, Skip, you got any more of these shirts? I go, Iggy, I don't want the shirt. He goes, no, nah, never mind. What? You need an air conditioner? <laughs> I go, actually, I do need an air conditioner. Me and my cousin both were talking about it. He needs one, too. He goes, you got two? He goes, yeah, okay, go to Skip's house. I go to this guy's fucking house in Revere. He's so old, he has people steal shit and bring it to his house and leave it in the driveway, and he's too old to put it in the house, so he has to sell it right away. And then he calls me, he was friends with my grandfather. He calls me two weeks later. He goes, Joey, I got your table saw. I go, what table saw? He goes, you didn't want a table saw? I go, no. He goes, ah, fuck, who wanted the table saw? I go, how the fuck? Did okay, you guys understand this shit is stolen goods and people ask him to steal shit and then he forgets who asked him to steal it. What the fuck is wrong with you people? You didn't all grow up like this? You didn't know a bunch of fucking hoodlums? The guy from Lynn did. That's where they moved when they made money. My uncle was a cop in Lynn. A detective, my Uncle Frank, he give me a watch. I go to his house, a little kid, to get the watch. He go, you like that watch? I go, yeah. He goes, that's a good watch. I go, thank you. You like it? I go, yeah. He goes, that's a good watch. I got that off a dead guy. <laughs> and then I put that into my act as his character, my Uncle Cheesy, talk like this. What are you crying for? What, you remember? Who knows Uncle Cheesy? You've seen me do that? Yes. Wow. I haven't done that in a really long time. But... I do it on TV, and I always knew my Uncle Frank was breaking my balls as a cop. And then when he saw me do it on TV, he goes, you know, I really got those watches off of dead people. <laughs> he goes, we went to a house if a guy was dead and he didn't have any family. We knew the coroner was going to steal everything, so we took what we wanted, and I liked watches. He had a fucking drawer full of dead people's watches. <laughs> All right, you ready? ready? Thank you very much, boy. <laughs> That's last year's champion, Joey and Eddie.
All right, here's the quick change. Quick change up. We're getting the final results right now. And while we do that, we're going to quickly just go through, because we have a studio audience here, but we have a whole audience watching in on here. So I'll let you guys in on what we're selling right now. And uh, we have three different packs available tonight. Pack number one is called the Bit Pack, six cigars. Six cigars, $59.99. You get a Fleur Dominicana Lajero, six by 60 natural in Maduro. You get an LFD 300 Oscuro. You get a LFD 400 Oscuro and 500 Oscuro, plus one of those exclusive cigars you guys just smoked out here, which is the Fleur Dominicana Joke and Smoke exclusive, only available here tonight. That is it. $59.99, and that is the first pack. And our second pack of the night is the Gag Pack. It's nine cigars featuring the LFD Lavocada, the Capitulo Dos, the Double Ajero Chisel Maduro, the Oro Tubo Number no. 6, the 654 Maduro, the 452 Maduro, the L400 Oscuro. You'll also get a Joke and Smoke exclusive cigar and the LFD event only cigar. And then the last pack is the LOL pack, which is lots of La Fleur. And it's 20 cigars for $1.99, which also includes free shipping. You'll get all the cigars in both packs. That's 15 plus five more special cigars. You'll get one extra LFD, LFD event only cigar. So you'll get two instead of one. You'll get three extra joke and smoke cigars. So that's five instead of two. And we'll even add one LFD Tomahawk cigar from last year's gourmet smoke session. But that's not all. We'll also throw in an autographed cookbook and give the money to charity. It's 20 cigars for $199.99, which is eight rare cigars plus free shipping and a free cookbook for charity. All right. So those are the three, those are the three choices that the people listening in. They're your choices, too, before you leave and you go downstairs. You can pick one of those three if you like. And everything's ready to go. And uh, as long as we have them online, they go to... TwoGuysCigars.com. Right on the front page, you'll see a bright orange black graphic. Click it. It will take you to the page to purchase your pack of choice. Now, i got to say, except for three of them, there are no losers tonight. Really? They were, they, they, this was some top-notch comedy, was it, it not? It was. We had Tony V. He was our host. How about a nice hand for Tony V, everybody? <laughs> Tony, thank you. He not only did a great job, but he's the one that puts us all together for us. He's a good friend and uh, a cigar smoker. He's up here all the time. You can bump into Tony, come in the two guys in Salem. Uh, we had uh, Christine Hurley. Christine Hurley, what do you think of her? Yeah. Huh? Very did a funny. Great job. Funny, funny lady. Uh, Brad Mastrangelo was next. How about a hand for Brad Mastrangelo? Yeah. Funny Brad, and they liked you too. Funny and bald. I'm partial <laughs> to that. Yeah, yeah. And then we had uh, the last one, Orlando Baxter. All right, it, it, all, it all sounded equal, but I have the answers right here in my hand. So we're gonna do this every single year and have a, have a different winner. And uh, in, in the past, we have had, uh, in 2019, Drew Dunn won our championship last year. Mm -hmm. You saw him, Joey Annetti was our champion. And this year, the winner, what do you think? For the championship right now is Mr. Orlando Baxter. Yeah, buddy. Orlando. Barry, that's not. I'm a... Congratulations. Thank you. How about a nice hand for Orlando, everybody? And as we Thank found you. out, Orlando, it comes with a free case. Free, free problem case, yep. Good. All right, that's it for Joke and Smoke, everybody. Thanks to our studio audience. Thanks for all the people out there listening in uh, to the Cigar Authority. You'll catch us every Saturday on the Cigar Authority. We'll catch you then. Bye, everybody. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.